Good evening, Buxfires. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Welcome into Gigi. Hello, Neve. Hello, Marina. Hello, Seven. Hi, Techno. Yes, it is learning time today. Welcome, welcome, Hamp. Hello, Lunar. Thank you for the hydration. I hydrated with a smoothie today. Hello, Blaze. Hello, Turtle. Graham, welcome in. And Reality, hi, hi. All right, are we ready for some... <gasps> So yeah, today we're gonna be doing a learning series. Are you guys excited for that? Um, I know there was a couple people on uh, Twitter too that expressed interest in uh, learning along with me. I know Fox mentioned too that they'd be super interested in learning along with me. So I'm starting from the very, very, very beginning of this course. So this is uh, Two Shams course. They are a, a Korean illustrator. And um, yeah, it's on Coloso. So if you guys want to get the course, so you can get a better um, tutorial session, I have the link also pinned in the Discord. If you decide, um, I'll actually pin it here too. Better instructions by it here. There we go. <clears throat> Perfect. Was this being done in a way needing the course or not? So if you want like the actual teacher to be teaching you um, and you really want to like follow their guidance, because like I can miss say things or it might not be as clear coming for me and stuff because I'm also just learning and not knowing what I'm doing. So if you really, really want to better learn, I would suggest getting the course. Um, what I'm just gonna be doing is I'm basically gonna be watching the courses on my own. I can't stream them obviously because they are paid courses. Um, so I'm just gonna be doing the courses on my own and you guys can follow along. I'm probably gonna be talking about like things like, okay, I'm like, oh, I gotta get the cheek more like this or something. And like, okay, they're saying to do a guide like this. So you'll be watching me do the learning courses, if that makes sense. Um, so you guys can follow along with me basically. But yeah, if you're, if you're really wanting an in-depth um, and you can afford the course, I would highly recommend getting the, the course because you will get a way better experience that way. And you're gonna be able to like go back and re-listen to their advice and stuff like that. Like, I guess you can go back and listen to the VOD, uh, my VOD, but if, if, you're, if you're wanting a more intense course, I, I recommend getting it, you know? But if you're okay with uh, just free following around with me, then that's okay with me too, so. Um, what I will do too, actually, is post my work at the end. Um, so I'll post my PSD files and all the guides and stuff that I make um, so that you guys could use those as guidelines. Um, I have no issues with you guys working off of my um, work and stuff like that. So uh, I'll post them, post them along for you guys. Also, I need a drawing glove. But yeah. So, but we're starting like right from the very beginning. So we're going to be going through and setting up like their shortcuts and guides and everything. So is this song really loud? It was a little loud on my ears. But yeah! So, should we get started? <laughs> so we're using Clip Studio Paint. Um, if you have Photoshop or anything else, you can still apply the lessons um, of the art to your own drawings and stuff like that. Like the, the the meat of the art is going to be the same regardless of your platform that you're using. Um, but they do use Clip Studio Paint. So I'm going to set up my Clip Studio Paint the way that their workflow works and setting up and using their hotkeys and stuff like that. So if you're not using Clip Studio part, Paint, the first part of this is probably not going to be as useful to you. Um, but if you are on Clip Studio Paint then and you want to use uh, their settings, then you can follow along too. Get my stuff set up in time. Wasn't sure how it was going to be done. Yeah, no worries. <clears throat> Get your Clip Studio paints open. We'll start up real soon. 
Oh man, that's so cool. So I, I got my window open today because it started raining and you guys know I love the rain. So I had the window open, but somebody just biked, biked uh, across in like one of those, you know, like you lie down in the bikes and you pedal. What are those called? They have a certain name. T not tandem bike. T tandem is when you're like one behind the other. There's like a special name for them, but I don't remember. Okay. <clears throat> so, one horrible, awful thing that I did was you can only have the courses on um, a certain number of devices. And I have it set up on my desktop, my phone, and my iPad. And I think I should have set it up for my iPad, my desktop, and my laptop because it was like, oh, you can't register any more de devices when I was trying to get it on my laptop. Because I was like, the laptop will be a little bit bigger. Recumbent bike. Thank you, Neve. That's what I was looking for. Banana bikes have the long seats. Yeah. Yeah, lie down, bike, go pedal. Exactly. One of those. Um, but yeah, so I was going to do it on my laptop. But then I was like, because it was a little bigger, easier for me to read. Um, but unfortunately, I couldn't put it on my laptop because I had too many devices. So they said to send in a customer support email and they can reset it so that I can set it to my desktop, my iPad, and my laptop. Um, but they haven't gotten back to me yet. So I'm gonna watch it on my phone. <laughs> it's just gonna be tiny. <laughs> but um, I also made up my own, maybe you guys might wanna do the same thing here. I made just like a worksheet um, using their uh, canvas size. So th they're working um, on a 4,000, uh, you can see it up here, a 4,000 pixel by 2,500 pixel at 350 DPI. So you do want to make sure, like when you're doing art, you want a good, healthy sized canvas. So I just put in what they were working with, but that is one of the first things, like when I first started doing art, I had no idea how big to make my canvas. And that was like a huge step, like when I learned that you were supposed to use a pretty healthy sized canvas and DPI. Once I learned that, I was like, oh, my art does look better. Like it doesn't look pixelated. <laughs> so um, that is a very good first step that I think like super beginners just don't know um, setting up their pages and stuff like that. So we'll be working on 4,000 pixels by 2,500 pixels. How do we change the canvas size? So if you go to file, um, you will have a new, so you're gonna PC power pending. <laughs> True, very true. Um, but yeah, you're gonna hit file and then you're gonna hit new or control N is a hotkey as well. Um, and then it will bring up a little window. You won't be able to see it online. Um, but it'll bring up a little window and there'll be a width and a height. So you can make the width uh, 4,000, the height 2,500. Oh, and sorry, the units is on the side. There's a unit pixel, PX. I wonder if I can just change this for a display capture today. We might need it. Change this to Lacom. There we go. There you go. So you guys will be able to see better my windows. here. There we go. Ta-da! There you go. So now you can see it. Ta-da! So this window will pop up. Um, you can change your units over here to pixel. And then yes, 4,000 by 2,500. 300 DPI is your re uh, resolution, also known as DPI. You can choose setting ones too. They'll have like a default drop down for uh, 350. So you can do that too. And then yeah, just paper color is your color of paper. Um, and you can set up templates and stuff, but we don't need to worry about that for this. So yeah, you just hit okay, and it'll make you a new page that will look like this. So scroll wheel moving in and out, right? Um, to pan is the space key. 
I think some of these will be the same for her. This is just what I use default. Space key is to pan, to move your canvas. Um, R is rotate for me, right? And then if you double click it, it'll snap to center. So I use R for rotate. You can tap it once and then double left click will orientate it um, the way you wanna be. So I think that would be it for canvas stuff. You can also use down here in um, Clip Studio, there is these little draggers down here. This will be just be your zoom that you can use um, or your rotates here. Right, and then I think there's a reset, reset rotation button down there as well. But most people will use hotkeys and that is art for me. <gasps> art, hello Kara, welcome in. We're doing beginner art lessons. Beginner. Um, so let me see what is the first, what is the first shortcut? I think they, I think they do their shortcuts first. I don't know if they download it or not. Let's see. Setting up a work environment in Clip Studio Paint. Oh. <laughs> Some art practice. That's good. Okay. Yes, so we're gonna be setting up the keyboard shortcuts first. So to get to your shortcuts, um, I believe it's preferences. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Preferences, I think it's this one. Perfect, okay. Oh, you can also control Alt K, I think they said, but. Hold on. Hold on, maybe I did do the wrong one. Control Alt K. I know it's in here somewhere too. Oh, shortcut setting. There it is. Control, Shift, Alt, K. That's a lot of buttons, but it's also right here. So if you go file and then shortcut settings is we're gonna go to right here. Control, Shift, Alt, K. And then that brings up the shortcut menu. So there's a category they said for different kinds of things up here. Pop up palettes, which this is like a pop up palette, this window. Tools, main menu. Okay. So I just went to tools because I think she's going to do the tools here. I know she sets up like a brush, eraser, airbrush settings. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. I uh, use Krita, that's fine. You can, you should be able to do the same thing. I just don't know what the Krita um, ones are. But all they're basically saying right now is you want like to use your keyboard um, for the program and they'll set like um, certain keys on their keyboard to be like their brush, their airbrush, like their pen tool, their airbrush and stuff. So that way they aren't wasting time and it's like super quick, right? So I think we're gonna wanna go to N. So I'm opening up pen. So you find your pen brush and um, they use the mapping pen. So they use the mapping pen as their default um, pencil or pen that they use for drawing. So I put... I 
just want to know what keys they like to assign so that we're all on the same page here. So they did the airbrush um, first, actually. Airbrush. So there's airbrush here. So this is just gonna jump you to your airbrush um, tab. So we're gonna double click in the box. It's B right now. Um, they set it to be S. So we're gonna change ours to S. Okay. And you just click out of it to uh, save it. Airbrush on S key. Hello, Kenju. Welcome in. Also, hello, Shadek. Very welcome. We are learning. We're doing some art. Real beginner stuff. We're setting up uh, hotkeys at the moment. So now it should be set that when you press S, it'll give the airbrush. Okay, go back to the window. Oh yeah, and if you need to delete a shortcut, you just hit the delete shortcut button. And then you can put it back or whatever, so they're just exploiting that as well. Ah, flipping your canvas. That is an important one. You're gonna wanna learn how to uh, constantly be flipping your canvas back and forth. Yeah, I never used hotkeys for art before, except for default stuff like that. I've never used them for, um, I've never used them for brushes and stuff like that. But this person saying like, it's really important that you actually do because you save so much more time than constantly having to go to the side, click the brush that you want to use and stuff like that. So if you can hotkey it, you're going to speed up your productivity. Uh, productivity by quite a bit, right? And I mean, it makes sense. It's gonna take a while um, to probably get used to and remember that I don't have to keep going over to the side, search for the icon, click on it. Like that time that you have to do that, it starts to add up, right? So, um, so flip the canvas horizontally. Menu commands. Click on view, aha. Flip horizontal. We're assigning the J key for this. So I had mine set to F for flip, but we're gonna change it to J. J is already used in blend, that is fine. It's just gonna delete it. Yes, that's fine. Cause I'm pretty sure she resets the blend key. So I have set my flip horizontal to J. You got a shark, Chris shark. Also, hello, Cal. <laughs> Not a good enough artist to use that many brushes. Well, they actually only use like four brushes for their entire thing. And again, if, if you have like other short keys that you think would be better, that is more than, uh, you're more than welcome to put your own shortcuts as well. But I'm just gonna be following their course, so, and their workflows, so I'm gonna follow them. All right. So the pen, they set to C. So let's close this. We're gonna find under tools. We're gonna find our pen. So this is where, so like before we were just using whatever standard brush we have set. It's It was like for the airbrush, we just selected like the category for it. Because we're always gonna be use this pen for lining, um, we're actually gonna select the pen that we want. Does that make sense? So instead of picking the pen file and you can like pick from any, it's going to open up this specific pen every single time you press that key. Um, so under pen, we are going to find the mapping pen. Okay. And we're gonna hotkey that to C, they said. C, 
See, I that's the one that I'm not sure about because to me, the C key is already my switch color and I'm very used to that already. I wonder if I changed it to D for me. Because my airbrush is S, can I make it D? Select layer. So I'd like them in a row almost. Oh, too late. It's D. I deleted the other thing, whatever it is. If you're not already used to it, you can use C like her. I already use C as a hotkey that I am very, very entrained and used to already. So that's the only reason why I want to keep mine. All right, so we have that mapping pen. I know it has them here. I think it was here. Ah, yes, here's all the, the ones. Perfect. Wait, I can just copy them from here. <laughs> this makes it way easier. So, let's see, so S is my airbrush. Oh, should I just change C? C is the rounded brush. But I have C as this. I think I'm gonna keep a D. Um, and then B is their coloring brush, which we need to download. So let's just go to C, our mapping brush, and we're gonna match these settings. Okay, so in your Clip Studio mapping pen, you're gonna find the mapping pen here on the, the left, and we're gonna set the settings to the same as theirs. So my brush size, 15. That might change as you're using it, but um, just try to go with a general 15 for sizing. Opacity should be 100%. And then the anti-aliasing is on the third setting. So weak, that is medium. So it's set to medium right here, this button. And then your stabilization should be set to 15. Um, so you can click, drag, you could use the buttons or you can double click on it and type in the number for all of these. So do what your preference is for that, okay? So that is the basic brush. Let's do our airbrush next. So, airbrush. I have my own soft brush. I have so many. Oh wait, this is my airbrush, sorry, this is my airbrush. So this is the soft. I'm guessing that they use the default as well because they didn't say to download one. So let's see, brush size doesn't really matter because it's gonna change, but 170. Uh, our blending mode is set to normal. <laughs> Watch the VOD for this one, no worries. There'll be a VOD, I have a VOD channel. So it'll be there if you guys wanna go back uh, reseed the settings and stuff like that and adjust. Um, so 170, normal. Hardness is going to go down to 1. Uh, brush density is going to be 33. Uh, continuous spraying is off. Stabilization is 0. This is unchecked and area scaling is off. Perfect. I'm just gonna lock mine for now, lock my settings for it, which is just this little lock button up here. But, <laughs> Gigi's on it. <laughs> Thank you, Gigi. What up, Vod Watchers? <laughs> um, I don't see the hardness. Oh, so you don't see this on your, you're on the soft airbrush. You press your um, S key to switch to your soft airbrush and it should be the one at the very top here selection because you can go down here and select should be the soft brush here oh no I wasn't on soft there you go there you go so you should be able to set it up now sorry if I forgot to explain that 
Okay, so that is our airbrush. Uh, e is set up for eraser. Is that default? Yes, that is default. So we don't need to change that. E is our eraser key. Um, then we have secondary keys. Um, control S is our save key. That is a good one to know. That one is default, control S. <laughs> it's a very, very good one. And remember, space is pan. Move around. Um, G is both the paint tool and gradient tool. What is G set by default? It is the gradient tool. It's set to gradient for me. So I guess I'll leave that. I don't know what they mean by it's both paint tool and gradient tool, but I don't think you need to really worry about a hotkey for fill tool all too much. It's more just your brushes, I think. And then A is the asset for filling the base color. Ah, okay. What is A set to do by default? I don't think anything. So, I know this one is one we have to download and W is auto select. Perfect. That is also a default uh, Clip Studio paint um, hotkey. So W is good. We don't need to change that. And R is blending colors. Ooh, but I have it as my rotate. I will pick E or something. No, E is eraser. W is for cool. Maybe Q? Q might be good. Okay, let's go back to our shortcuts. So file, shortcut settings, and we are going to find our blend tool. Blend, this guy right here. So the, just the whole category we want. Blending, let's try to make it Q. Perfect. So it's gonna be Q for us. Maybe I'll make a note of that. I changed mine. I'm going to make a nice note of that. Okay, so we changed. I changed this to be Q, just because R is my rotate. I'm gonna add that to R is rotate space is pan um, and Q Q is blending what else did I change C C was changed to D I believe let me double check no is the, D is the operation key. Look at C. What did I change it to? Let me open my settings. See, this is why I write it down so that I can remember. <laughs> If you got buttons on your drawing tablet, would it work to assign shortcuts to them or would it might be worth um, waiting on those? You can for sure. Um, I have found that I just, I have a remote key, but I find that having my um, keyboard is just so much more useful to me because there's you're going to need your keyboard anyways and stuff like that for a lot of things I find. But if you prefer the, the key, absolutely map, map them to the key. Also, Terry! Thank you for the raid. Welcome in. We're doing some beginner art teaching. Welcome in. Welcome in. Whoa, and DM. <laughs> Double raid. <laughs> Game now. Birthday later. <laughs> welcome in to both of you raiders. Siri, do you have any art um, to share? Do you have some art tags? I assume you were doing art. <laughs> And uh, Foxfires, be sure to both give Tiri and Girl DM some love. We'll give DM a shout out after we finish um, Tiri's shout out. Oh, you drew Corona! I'm so excited. Show me the doggo. And also, DM, what were you up to? Oh, you're playing Content Warning. How is that game? Is it scary? Is it scary? And hydration, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Okay, so I shouldn't play it. <laughs> is what I'm hearing. <laughs> it's too scary for me. 
Not like super scary? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Less scary than Phasmo, okay. Okay. About as scary as Lethal Company, I'd say. Mm, okay, okay. Our tag's ready, thank you. Let me, uh, is uh, uh, Blaze or Gigi able to give perms for Tiri for the art tax? And also I should explain, my name is Lily. Welcome in, Rainers. Um, today we are doing a beginner art course. So I purchased a class um, with the illustrator Tu Sham from Coloso. Um, they are a Korean illustrator and super amazing. So I'm going to be following through their course and you guys are welcome to follow along with me. This is super beginner so we're like changing up hotkeys, getting everything set up in Clip Studio and stuff. Um, before we move into, I think we're gonna get to head shapes today. Um, but yeah, feel free to follow along if art is your thing and join. Also, let's see our, uh, Terry's art tax. Yeah, welcome in, welcome in. You got a bell? Just, oh my gosh, this is so cute. This is Terry's art tax from the raid. Oops, not new. Look it! Tiri, this is so cute. Are you doing all of the Hololive members? I assume you're gonna turn these into keychains like you usually do, right? It's so cute. And also both of you raiders, if you have to uh, go and rest up, please do. We got a fox fish. There's a fox fish on the board. Um, if you have to go and rest up, please do take care of yourselves too. And thank you for trusting me with your communities. Did we, were we able to get a, um, a link for DM too? Make sure to go follow DM as well. Oh good, we did, I see it. Good, good, good. Oh, I don't wanna get jump scared. Saw DM's jump scare, I don't wanna get jump scared. <gasps> Doing all the new EN girls, uh, Corone, Suse, Marine, and Pecora. Oh my gosh, and yes, there'll be charms. Very exciting. As always, Tiri, it looks amazing. <laughs> oh, Tiri, you're also part of the reason why I ended up getting a course, cause you got a course from Coloso as well and you went through it and you said it was like super helpful to you, so. I ended up buying one and now I'm going through it right at the beginning. You caught us right at the beginning of learning, so. Aww. Peckle Mama? <laughs> Peckle Mama? Ah, good luck. Thank you. And thank you very much again for the art text, Tiri. Be sure to give Tiri some love. All right. But yes, so uh, we're going back. And I changed some of my settings around and then I already forgot what buttons they were. So we're gonna rechange them things. Where is Canvas settings? No, oh I'm in file. File shortcut settings. There we go. Also, Peko Mama is so cute. Adorable. Amazing model. Alright, so. My pen tool was set to D. I did have it set to D. Oh, sure, now you work. <laughs> sure, now it works. I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't working before. All right. So there's D. Um, we're gonna download, because they use a specific coloring blush that we're all gonna download off the Clip Studio Asset Store. Um, so let's just double check. D is our mapping key. It's not. Why is it? Ah, if I double click it. Oh, so you can set two. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to delete it from the other one because I don't need the other one. That's so cool. You can set, uh, multiple things for the same, um, shortcut key. I didn't know you could even do that. Yeah, I'm glad you watch your VOD so when I get a good tablet to do the settings. Yeah, it will be. I have a VOD channel, so it will be up there if you want to go back and review any of these settings, so. Stop by to say hi. Hello, Electro. Get some good sleep. And also, uh, Paco Power, thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. Go! Go! Thank you for the hydration as well from both uh, Anubis and uh, Neve. I will do hydrate for one and stretch for the other. I don't have a VODs command, but we should, GG. If you want to set it up, please do. I was thinking about that earlier. I was like, we should have a VODs um, command. Oh, uh, good stretch. <laughs> ha! 
huh, I should fix that. <laughs> yeah, if you want to do it, because it'll probably be useful right now, so. Um, also, Noogie and Riz, thank you for the follows, and welcome to the Box Fires. Go, go. <laughs> get some sleep, let's not get ahead of ourselves now. Mood. Okay, let's go to shortcut settings. I'm going to find... Oh, I wish I had a, a search. I know there's like some programs that will give you a search to find the key that you're looking for. I think it's in a selection menu. Nope, apparently not. Because I want to unhotkey that. Green border operation? Yes, select layer. So I'm gonna delete that. Perfect. So if you had that, if you're setting it up the same as me, delete that one. All right. I would suggest though, if you're brand new, set your hotkeys up uh, the way that they do. <laughs> Honestly. It's just because my C key is set to something that I use like almost as much as Control Z. So it's gonna be so hard to untrain myself of that. Um, so that's the only reason why I'm leaving my C um, as something different and my R as something different. All right, so... R is rotate, space is pan. And I guess there's the good old uh, control. Plus Z is undo. And then uh, shift. Shift plus uh, a control. It's probably you do it this way. Control plus shift plus Z is redo. Okay. So those are some other ones on there that they didn't list, but are going to be really helpful and useful to you guys. Okay. Yeah, I gotta fight that muscle memory. I guess for me, um, C is set to um, change to opacity um, color. Opacity. Uh, draw color? I don't know what to describe this as. I don't know what to describe. It basically, on this side of the screen, see when I press C, how it switches to this dotted X pattern? This basically means I can draw. So if I if I draw like with a pen, I can hit C and with the same pen, I'm going to erase what is there. Does that make sense? Am I drawing on the paper? I was. Oh well. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um But yeah, so it's gonna erase. And checkerboard means that it's transparent or um not there. There's nothing there if there's checkerboard. It's invisible. What sorcery is this? Right? Um, then, oh, I should also explain layers. I know they did that as well for new people. So on this tab over here, you're gonna find your layer information. So how a layer works is in art, you will make different, and it's like stacking like two pieces of paper. So, you hit the box here with the little plus icon, and that's gonna make a new layer here. So these are all layers. And what is on the bottom is like your lowest layer, right? And then in drawing, you will start stacking them on top of each other, right? So it would be kind of like this. So imagine having pieces of paper that you can put on top of one another, right? And so like you can draw on a head here, right? And then like a body here and then maybe some legs here. And that way when you draw on one layer, you might hear about artists being like, wrong layer, <laughs> right? Um, so that might be that they're drawing on the wrong portion of the paper that they wanna be drawing on. Like they might be, working on the legs and draw like feet on the head layer. <laughs> so you want to make sure when you're selected over here, you're drawing on your right layer. 
Um, and then yes, it works from the top to the bottom, right? So your paper is gonna be at the bottom, that's gonna be this sheet, right? And then on your way up, this will be the one. This will be your bottom layer, then this is like layer one, layer two, and they start going up from there. Akbar, thank you for the raid. Welcome in raiders. Welcome to Learning Tuesdays. <laughs> hello, hello Meme, welcome in. Ah, and thank you for the subby as well, Hogbar. Welcome to the Demon Army for 32 months. How was your stream? Yes, Fox Stars, be sure to go give Hogbar some love. Learning to spin around was cute. Thank you. I'm glad you like my dancing. Um, also, Chithorian? Chithorian? I don't know which way to say that, but thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. Go, go. Oh, and Watcher as well. Thank you too for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. Go, go. We are doing some uh, learning. So this is like a really beginner course for people that want to learn um, anime art and clip studio and stuff like that. So, ah, trying to learn Chinese, you do it. It's very hard, I agree. Um, but yeah, so that is a small lesson in layers. Okay. So, I think that's pretty much set for the short keys. I'm gonna save this, because I'm, I'm gonna give you guys my working files too, so you'll have all these edits that I give. So I will post um, my files in the Discord. Um, this is just, again, how to set up your shortcuts. So we've done that. And I think that's pretty much... Oh, we gotta download the brushes, right. So next is we're gonna be learning how to install from Clip Studio Paint um, Asset Store. So the old Clip Studio Paint Asset Store, it looked like this. It does look different now. Um, it looks like this. So this is like the new update page. So you might have this, you might have this, okay? Uh, if you have not updated, it's still gonna look like the old version here. Um, so we are gonna go to the asset store. So if it's the old version, it will look like this, which means we are going to open up the asset store. If I remember how to do this, I think I click on it and then I click on the top. So I think you can click on any of these. And then if you click at this, it'll bring you to the store. That's the one way I figured out how to do it. <laughs> it's like, it just got released, like the uh, setup for it. So even I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing yet <laughs> with the new store. All right, so there's the store open. And then we are going to... All right, we're gonna search for the brushes. Um, what is the first one we are going to? Okay, so this is just giving general. I want to know the actual brush name. So this is the coloring brush that they use. It's called this TPU skin brush, which is in here. I think they put the name. Did they not? In the lesson, I thought they said that they put the name for it. Coloring brushes. Dang it, they didn't. Okay. We're gonna do our best to actually find it on the store because it's, uh, I think it was named in Japanese. So I might have to search for it in Japanese, but let's see if TPU Skin Brush shows up. TPU Skin Brush. Oh, it's there! We're in luck! We're in luck. TPU Skin Brush. So in this top search bar, you're gonna type TPU skin brush. And it's gonna add those tags. And we're gonna click on the brush. Perfect, so this is how you add assets to your library. So we're gonna hit um, the free download button. I don't know if this is gonna pop up with any personal information, so I'm just gonna hide it for a moment and check it first. Because you have to sign in. Sign in required. Hold on.
Why are you not letting me sign in? Contact. Clip Studio, I should be signed in. Why are you not letting me sign in? Hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Sad sad. Let's go. Account. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. I gotta log in. So uh, if you're having difficulties, here I'll show how to get to it. Just in case you're having difficulties of finding out how you're supposed to log in. Um, on the sidebar here, you're gonna have this account right here on the left hand side. So if you're having troubles logging in, you're gonna wanna click on this account and it's gonna bring up a pop-up that will have like your email address for your Clip Studio account and your password for your Clip Studio account. So use the email that you signed up with and the password and you should be able to log in again. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now with the stream down so that you guys don't see my account information. Let's go, let's go, side to side, let's go. Let's go, let's go, side to side, let's go. Let's go, let's go, side to side, let's go. Am I good? Am I good, Clip Studio? All right, I think we're good. Uh, I just gotta search for my brush again. So I'm going back to the Studio Asset Store by clicking on one of those random store brushes and then clicking on that top button that says Studio Asset Store and we are gonna go for TPU Skin Brush. And then we're gonna click on that and we're gonna hit uh, re-download for me. Now that I'm signed in, I guess I got my brushes back yet, but it'll say download. So click on that red download button and then you should be good again. Here, I can show. Uh, my chat is a little bit in the way, but there's a little gear icon here. You can kind of see my upper right-hand corner. There's a little gear there. You'll actually end up seeing a little one that goes to here, and that means it's downloading. So you, if it's like taking a long time, you can actually click this gear and look at your downloads, and you can see like the progress bars. Usually it's pretty quick though, so it, you might not have any issues, and it'll just come and go real quick. Um, but yeah, there's that. And then back in your actual Clip Studio now, we will have um, some, your brush is going to, it's hidden on my screen. Let me just poke this out for a, a quick second. Boop, see, it's gonna be on this little bar on the side. If you don't have this, there's little arrows up here that will click open. I think by default, it is on the right hand side. So if you don't see this, um, asset store menu just click on some of the arrows that are up here and it should pop up for you I think um, if it doesn't it might be in window it's always been there for, for me so let me see layer property navigator align don't actually know. Is it Navigator? No, Navigator is this. Materials tab. It should be Materials tab, but I don't see it on here in my window. Which show tab in Canvas, Align, Navigator, Layer. Oh, and this is actually, sorry, this is a good thing to show too. Window, um, if you click Window, these are all your things. So if you don't have like a color wheel like I do on the screen, you can click color wheel here, right? And then it will be displayed. And you can click and drag all these um, tools around, right? To the way you want it. So like I can pop it out here like this um, and then like pop it back in to a window. So I just moved all my around, mine around the way that I like it. Um, and you feel free to put them where you want to, so. If you wanna just copy mine, that's fine. If you wanna copy uh, theirs or whatever, that worked too. It's whatever workflow works best for you. Also, uh, more to Chrissy, Chrissy, thank you for the follow and welcome to the Foxfires. Go, go. Um, so yeah, that that's a good thing to show for window too. How do you get the materials tab to pop up? Oh, it might just be default because there's all of these too. 
I, I think it is just always on by default. If you can't find it, Google Clip Studio Paint uh, Materials tab. <laughs> and I'm sure there'll be a tutorial to explain it to you. Uh, yeah, so now uh, our brush pen is going to be downloaded. Um, if you don't see it, you can also, um, so my, I'm just set to all materials right now. You can also go to your downloads and you'll have all the stuff that you have actually personally downloaded from the store. So here's all of mine. There's a lot you will see. Um, the Studio Asset Store is very addictive. Um, but yeah, so, and then you can like, there's some already pre-downloaded with Clip Studio Paint, but you can go through and uh, look at all of these as well. But um, I just usually have it set to all materials. Your download stuff generally show up um, first. So yeah, and uh, how we are going to add a pen now. So now that you have it downloaded, you're like, what? It's not in my pen thing. How do I use this so-called asset? Um, so you actually have to register them. So... I'm gonna show you guys how to make a subgroup because I think that will be very useful. I'm just gonna delete this one because I never use it. All right, so on the top here, these are like your pens. So default, it comes with pens and markers for Clip Studio. Um, we use the pen for our mapping one, but let's make one that is specifically for um, for uh, two sham so we can put all our two sham um, brushes all in one uh, little window so how we're gonna do that is we will click on our mapping tool and we're gonna duplicate the sub tool okay so we're gonna duplicate it we can call it mapping pen 2 that's fine um, you can change like how you want it to look and stuff like that too so we can use like the pen tool system. You can also, I think, add your own icon as well. Um, but we'll just use the pen looking default one. Um, so let's just hit OK. Oh, wait, we can change the background color too to make it look different. Let's do that. I'm going to make mine blue. OK, so we're going to have like a little blue pen icon. So when it's over here, it'll be blue and it'll kind of stand out a little bit more. So we'll know it's for our two sham brushes. So we're gonna hit okay. See, so now when we're selected on this brush on the left-hand side, it actually turns the pen blue. We were looking for material in window. I think, is that what it is? Is there material? Sometimes it's hard to see. Oh yes, it is, there it is. Thank you, Blaze. <laughs> Blaze figured it out. So if you want that tab on the right-hand side to open up, you go down to material and then you can um, add which ones you want. So I just have all materials selected for mine. So that's how you can get the window on the right hand side to show up. Thank you, Blaze. Not sure if it'll help with the brushes box. There are on the left. You can add the sub tool as a brush if you scroll all the way down from your brushes list. Yes, we're getting there. We're getting there. I think I know what you mean. Um, okay, so we have this mapping to brush that we duplicated, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that and drag it up to the top. And you'll get a line whether you wanna put it first, second, third. So I'm gonna put mine third. And it's gonna put that mapping pen up onto its own tab. I've learned that a lot of people don't know this about Clip Studio um, and that you can make these folders in your brushes. So that's why I figured I'm gonna go over it with you guys because I had a lot of artist friends that was like, I had no idea you could do that. So. I'm teaching you now. <laughs> also, Ray Wall, thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. Go, go. Oh, you don't think yours has it installed yet? Okay, good, good. I'm glad you found it then, Blaze. Because I was worried. Good, good, good. Mmm, got Clip Studio on your phone. Yes, it'll work good. On phone might be a little small, but I've seen amazing artists do it. So it can definitely be done. One of my favorite artists, uh, Paul Kwan, actually uses like a phone and a iPad to do all of their artwork stuff with. So it can be done. All right, so we got this mapping pen too. Oh, uh, let's rename this. So if you right click on your um, thing, it's gonna bring up subtool group settings. So you're gonna be able to open that up and rename it. So I'm gonna name my two sham brushes. We're gonna hit okay, and now it will be named at the top. 
So we have their mapping pen that they like to use. I'm going to now add in that color pen that we chose. So you're gonna go down to add sub to sub tool. So we're gonna click on that and that's gonna bring up this window. And again, you can like search for what you found. So if you type in the TPU, it doesn't show up because it's written in Japanese, unfortunately. Um, but if you click on tag type, download a material, it should also um, come up as well. So we're gonna click on that brush and we're gonna click over here, add palette. Okay, so now we have our coloring brush added. Um, let's add some of these other materials. So I know the one that they want right now is this um, fill ice cream tool. The others I haven't come across in the lesson plan yet. So we're just gonna add these two for now. But as we work through, we'll go in and we'll find these other brushes and add them. Um, or if you wanna go through and add them first on your own time, you're more than welcome to, so. Okay, so we're gonna look for this. Um, no gaps, close and fill for erasing tool reference layer. What a mouthful. So let's go back to our store and we're gonna search for material catalog other or no gaps. I guess it's called no gaps, close and fill plus for erasing tool reference layer. That is a big name. <laughs> Cause we'll try no gaps, close and fill. We'll try that to start. So I'm just gonna go back to the asset store. We're gonna head back so we can get to the search. I'm just gonna close off these search tools. <laughs> what are we searching again? No gaps, close and fill. No gaps, close and fill. Look at that. It showed up. There's the ice cream tool. Um, so it looks like there is a paid version or a free version. Um, I already downloaded the free version. I think this might be also like if you just want to support them, they might have two versions. So if you want to help support the creator, you can also um, pay for the asset here because I'm pretty sure they're probably the same. But I'm going to go with this one. Ice cream. And then they also had other versions too. And I noticed the creator actually did have both of these different versions on their tool sets as well. I don't know what they do. Close and fill tool reference without gaps. A tool reference that disappears without a gap. No idea what these do. No idea. I know Clip Studio has one. I don't know. We're gonna download it though. I think this is what they want. It's a blue ice cream though. Hold on, I'm gonna go to their... Is this just like the full pack? I think this is the one I want. This is the one we want, I'm pretty sure. Cause theirs is a pink ice cream tool, right? Yes, pink ice cream tool. We want the pink one. The pink one picture that looks like this. So we want this one. Okay, so again, you're just gonna hit the download button that's behind the lurk here. It's the big red button up here. Hit the download to re-download that. And then I should already have it. I'm just search for no gap. Nope, I don't have it on this computer. It's just on my iPad I have it right now. So let me just download that real quick. I don't know if it's going to bring up my account information, so I am going to minimize it for now. Redownload. Here we go. Now we wait for it to pop up. I don't wish I had a third monitor with all this. That's a mood. <laughs> That's a big mood. I was gonna have a laptop beside me. <laughs> Dang, this is neat, it's a good tool. It was a no gap, it's right here. You're gonna search for no gaps, close and fill. You'll see the person with the ice cream material show up. You're gonna wanna click on their um, 
the person, the creator's name, which is this K96. Click on that and see all of their brushes. And then click on the one that matches this icon. It'll be a pink ice cream. Cause they have a couple of different ones. The time saver this tool is, yay. That's good to hear. IPN bottles, thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. Go, go na. <laughs> Why stop at three monitors? I like the way you think, Gigi. Cool, so uh, get that one downloaded. Let me refresh. There we go, mine downloaded. Mine is here and ready. So let's go back to our brushes on left hand side. So again, it's in our materials list here on the right. So I'm going to add sub tool. We are going to click on our ice cream and we're gonna hit add palette. And that is going to add it into our little folder here that we have for to sham. Cool. So now we can go back and add those hotkeys. So, oh, and they, they have this too. So some assets need to be left clicked and dragged into the brush. So you can click in and drag them in, but um, I have never had that happen, but here's a little note they said, if that does happen to you. It is working off the old um, Clip Studio asset store though, so I don't know if that still works in the new one, um, but yeah. Um, these are just the instructions. Uh, here's what it'll show you, like if you click on your little gear icon, this is what it'll show like when your, um, your files are transferring over. <gasps> Summon Raid! Dickity, thank you for the raid! How was your stream? Welcome in raiders! Fires, be sure to give D Kitty some love and also D Kitty as channel. Welcome, my name's Lily, and we are doing a little bit of beginner art course today. So we're going over and setting up our Clip Studio um, settings and stuff like that and making them optimal and downloading our right brushes and stuff that we're gonna need for the course. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of learning every uh, Tuesday. So I'm really excited. Yeah, how was your stream, D Kitty? You're playing The Room, what is The Room? Is that one of those like escape room puzzle games? Um, there's the materials tab. Here we go. Um, yep, so we're back here. So we're gonna be back to our shortcuts. So let's go to file again. We're gonna go shortcut settings. And we are gonna find our brush that we just added. So I added my new one into the pen subtool folders. So we're gonna go to pen. If you can't find them, click on tools, pen. And then we are going to find, so there's these, these are your expanded folders. So the pen is this pink one, right? The marker is the second one. We should have a third one. So I just collapsed these two to make them smaller. And this is our two sham brushes. So that folder we made, we are going to set our, so there's our mapping pen is set to D. We want our color brush, which is this Japanese named one here, the second one. We want that one set to B. It is currently set to brush decoration at the moment, so I'm gonna go through and delete that one. We're gonna set it to B. And then our um, ice cream tool. Did they not say what our ice cream tool is gonna be set to? Oh, A. A is gonna be our ice cream tool. So the next one is going to be A. Perfect. Yay, we added all of our brush shortcuts. <laughs> Oh, it's solving big puzzles boxes. Ooh, I like puzzles. I might have to check it out then. Also, did you do that lo-fi game that you sent me? It's so cute too. Oh, it's a good game series. Ooh. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, also, Bloody Terror, thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. Go on, go on. Welcome to Beginner Lessons with Clip Studio Painted Lily. <laughs> Wait, that makes it sound like I'm sponsored by Clip Studio Paint. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just using it. Okay, so there is um, my keys. 
So we're just gonna hit, oh, I wanna make sure that that brush decoration one is, okay, yeah, so this one is, set, B is also set to my brush. So I'm just gonna click on the brush and we're just gonna hit delete shortcut. For me, for me. Yet, <laughs> imagine though. <laughs> Room is great. First three are desktop friendly. Oh, the fourth is VR. I do like VR. I, I want to play the escape room puzzle game thing too. Wolves got it for me and I do want to play it with you guys in VR. Heading out to work, but I wanted to say hi. Hope you have a good stream. Thanks for saying hi. Oz, good luck with work. Hopefully it's not a stressful day. Good luck, good luck. All right. So we're gonna hit okay. And that is all our shortcuts complete. Ta-da! So we did it all. Congratulations, Foxfires! We have made it through! Lesson number one. <laughs> we did it! We survived! We got through a, a lesson number one. Uh, saving these are fine with me. Did I edit anything on here? I didn't think I did. So I'm gonna just say no. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I've been using my VR for watching streams. I wanna try that, Seven. I do really wanna try that. All right, so let's open up our second set of course material. Oh, I've also um, posted them in the Discord too, so. If you want them, they are pinned. Um, my, my course material that I will be using and stuff like that, I will pin it into the tutorials um, section of the art channel. So if you are looking for that exclamation point discord in um, my chat, we'll bring that up and uh, we'll do that. Oh, color change. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <gasps> Boom. I have a dragon tail as well, but you can't see it behind all the litter. <laughs> but I got my horns. Fear the dragon. Uh, thank you for the Discord ping there, GG. And um, yeah, so it's gonna be in art tutorials and it will be a pinned message. Um, so you will find it there. So let me also get the next one ready. All right. Waiting. I click and drag them in. There we go. Yay! We're into the first first lesson. <laughs> we did it. We survived. So let me let me look through. So these are some practice stuff we got going on. Cool. I think this is the one that we first start with, so. Let me check my course. Uh, just gonna double check after setting everything up. Just making sure we got every, I don't want this. Wait. Explained layers, I did that. Control Z, we got that. I didn't explain what the magic wand tool does or the symmetry brush. So maybe I'll go over those two because those are some good ones. Just some general um, Clip Studio, other features that you might want to use. Uh, let me just get rid of these for now, just to see. So, oh right, I can use my hotkeys. Uh, it's D, yeah. Um, so we're gonna draw like a circle, right? Um, on this side here, there is a couple of ones that we can go over. So the, well, this is your zoom tool. This is a pan tool or rotate tool. 
Um, this is for using um, re uh, vector layers and stuff, so you probably won't need to use it for drawing as much. Um, same with the move tool. This is the first one that you'll use, so your lasso tool. So if you need to do selections of like squares or circles um, or create your own shapes, um, that's what those there. Um, for lasso tool, so there's actually, or like any tool, I guess, there's this type of selection tool mode at the uh, top here. So this will make it so that, see right now how I have these two shapes selected? If I make another, it's gonna make the other ones disappear and then keep with this one. If you wanna keep drawing, so sometimes like um, you wanna add selections, right? You can either add, click on your shift and that will add it, or you can um, also come over here and change the mode type. So I can actually click on this plus, and that means every time I add another circle, it's going to keep adding, right? Um, and then if you want to remove it or get rid of it completely, you can hit this deselect. There'll be a little bar that pops up, far left, gets rid of everything. That's the deselect. Um, or you can do the same thing where if I draw a circle, but say I wanted this to be like a donut, so I want to get rid of the middle, I can hit the minus key or I can hit the alt key. Alt will make a negative selection, so you can get rid of that. And then what this does, it means that I can only draw in this lasso area. So if I go back to my pen key with D, um, the left and right brackets make your pen go up and down, okay? So with the keyboard, left and right square bracket, change the size of the brush, right? So if I want to be or small. Um, so if I draw a line now, see how it only colors in what is selected, right? Like that. Um, so that's what these like lasso tools do. So I'm going to control Z backwards. Or if you want it all filled in, like you can just sit here and like, you know, color it all in. But sometimes you want it all completely filled in. You can also hit this paint bucket and it will also just fill it for you. So you can hit the paint bucket or you can also do edit fill as well. And that will also do it, okay? So that is the lasso tool, very useful. Lots of people, lots of artists will use that. Um, same thing, there's also like polyline and stuff, but most people use the lasso tool a lot. So that is a good one to learn. Um, then we have the magic select button. Um, so if you have this set to, again, same thing. So like I'm adding, keep, I can keep clicking to keep adding. I always usually have it set to those so that I just keep adding. Um, that's often what I usually use. Um, and then down here, you're gonna see this um, thing that says refer multiple. Um, so this is how it's going to know what to select basically. So like I'm gonna be clicking on this and it's gonna select the whole inside of this um, circle that I made, right? So that I could fill it, which is one click. I don't have to sit there and draw with my lasso tool around. I can just click the middle and fill. Um, however, it, it needs to know what to look at, essentially. So I have it right now to set to refer multiple layers. So it's gonna look through all my layers and count these as all the things that it's searching through, right? So if I had um, like on another layer, let's do a line or something like this, right? Um, if I'm on any layer and I click, it's gonna refer, refer to everything. So even though these are on two separate layers over here and I clicked here, it's only selecting this area right here, right? Um, however, say I wanted to still fill in this whole circle and not have it just select and like, you can just click on both sides, but you're gonna get that line in the middle that's white, right? And say, I don't want that. I want this whole circle select. Um, what you can do, so this is kind of like where some people will use it for like line art and stuff. 
you can set this layer as your um, guide. So right here, if you click on this little lighthouse here, you can set this layer as a reference, okay? So this is my circle, right? I have it set as uh, the reference. If I come back over here and I click on refer to the lighthouse or the reference, it's gonna make it so that when I select this, it's only looking at that layer that I set as the reference. So now when I fill, it's filling the whole circle. Does that make sense? <laughs> also, that's cool. Thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. Go, go. So yeah, that is um, the one select pen and how the um, set reference tool works, which I actually use it quite a bit, so it can be very handy. So I'm gonna unset that reference and I'm also gonna delete my layers. Oh, also to delete, right click and then hit delete. <laughs> Didn't explain how to delete a layer. Right click and then at the top it'll say delete. Uh, then what else we have? Eyedropper tool, it's very useful. Um, I think it is also the alt key if you were on a brush. Let me double check that. So say I had my black and my red and say I'm on the black brush, my black pen. I'm on black pen right now, but say I wanna be red, right? Um, if you press alt, you'll get a little alt eyedropper tool and you can click and see how over here that changed my color, right? So now I'm on black ink, now I'm on red ink, right? So now I can draw in red. So eyedropper tool, really, really useful. Um, also, it will matter a lot, a lot of the time, like when you're doing blending and stuff like that, sometimes you want that middle color or something like that, or you want to pick up what that color is. So that's why Alt, you click, and then you can keep drawing really easily. So doesn't right click also do that? Yep. It is also set to your pen, possibly. Everybody's is different, but yes, mine is. Um, I think a lot of time I just use old. <laughs> I don't use my pen clicks very, very often, but it does. Um, also, Darko with a go, go na. So that is the eyedropper tool. Then, of course, we have our brush setting. We have our pencil tools. We have um, brush tools. And then we have um, our airbrush tools, um, which we have hotkeyed now to D for our pen, S for our airbrush. It is very soft, but it's coming through, see, airbrush. Um, we have A as the ice cream. We have What was the other one? Q? Q! Q is my blur, nice! Okay, so I think that is what's up next, airbrush. Then we have decoration tool. So this one is, um, it's just a brush that has decorations and stuff on it. Um, so like you can make rock layers, bubbles here, these are bubbles, you know? Um, a whole bunch of different assortments of things, so. Also, Cap, thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. Go. Ah, okay, use right click. There you go. See, everybody's a little bit different. Also, hello, Ren. Enjoy the lurk. Um, so yeah, sometimes these are really useful. Sometimes not. You can you can download a whole bunch of these um, uh, different patterns and adjustments and stuff like that. So there is a whole multitude of different decoration brushes that you can get. So that's what that is. And then. The blur brush. So we had that set to Q. Um, how this one works is we have one color. Um, I think it's V also changes that, doesn't it? No, X, X. Um, if you wanna swap between these two colors, so red or yellow, you can set two colors up. If you wanna swap between them, it's your X on your keyboard. So if I do X, and I draw the next color. Um, if I want to soften this edge between them, I'm gonna hit my Q and I have it set to this blur. 
you can pick which one you like, I guess. I don't know if their course will use one or the other. If I find out, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, if we just have it set to the soft, make my brush a little bigger. See how it's just going to take those two colors and blend between them. So you get another color. So this would be like, now you can like hit Alt, choose that color in the middle, and now you can draw with it, right? So you can also use it for blending. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that. Then frame borders is more for um, special uh, manga reading, making manga and stuff like that. So don't we need to use it too much here? This is also a close and fill tool um, that Clip Studio Paint has. So if I have my black pen and I have a box like this, it's kind of finicky though, uh, but there is a close and fill option that you can use that is annoying. A lot of the times I have it set to my reference, I gotta turn the reference on. I don't know, it's super finicky and I can never figure out why it works sometimes for me and sometimes it doesn't. My clothes gap too small. There we go, it was too large though. If I turned the clothes gap up, meaning it was closing this gap, now I can circle everything and it um, fills in. Artists process and everyone finds their own quirks absolutely in quick fixes, but it's nice to see how others do it and learn how to improve. Exactly, 100%. Like even though I knew like my workflow and stuff like that, when I'm watching this person, I'm like, oh, that's like a good idea. Yeah, I should have my brush on that key. Or like, oh, that's a better key to do this. Or that's a better way to do that. So, you know, as an artist, you never stop learning. So <laughs> it's always good. Um, but yeah, so that's what this close and fill button does. Um, or there's also the regular fills. So you're referencing one layer only, refer to multiple layers. Why is it not referring to multiple layers? Oh, refer only to any, refer other layers. Nope, why is it not referring to this? I don't know. Why are you being weird? Oh, it's because I haven't got this filled. <laughs> That's why. So like, um, just like in like uh, Microsoft Paint, if there's a gap, your fill is gonna fall out, right? Your fill is gonna fall out, so. There we go, look at that. <laughs> I closed the gap and it works. Um, whereas like that other tool, this one, close and fill, I didn't need to worry about that, right? It filled the gap for me because I had the closed gap cranked up. So yeah, you can always learn forever, no matter the age. Saying old dogs can learn new tricks. Absolutely, Gaia, absolutely. So yeah. Uh, that is that. What else do we have down here? Uh, your gradient tools. So gradient tools, if you click and drag, you're gonna get a line like this. That is the direction your gradient is gonna go from. So you click and you let go and you get your gradient, right? So if I want it up and down or if I want the dark at the bottom, light at the top. Um, you can also hit shift and that's gonna lock on a line like a, a straight line. So shift will hold it straight for you, which um, can used for a, be used for a lot of things um, as well, not just that. Um, but there is those. Uh, you can also mess around with your gradients so you can like pull these around, these sliders, um, and you can fill them with your own color. So I made my own. I kept like a bunch of their defaults and stuff like that. I made one that I can just constantly change myself and I just called it my flex one. Um, if you want to make your own, you can just click on one and duplicate the sub tool again, like what we did for the brushes at the beginning. So you can make your own and then yeah, you can like click and drag in what colors you want. So if I want like a lime green at the end, you know, and then, ooh, now there's lime green in it. <laughs> so that's the gradient tool. Um, there's a lot you can do with gradients that I'm probably not gonna go into, but you can flip or go into advanced settings and change a whole lot of different stuff. But, um, we don't use it that often, so. If you wanna look that up, um, Cliff Studio Paint has like manuals that you can read all the different things that it can do. 
Um, then we have the circle tool or square tool, line tool, all these different ones. Um, these can, can be quite useful. So we have line tool, you click one end, drags, does a line. If you want the line to be straight, hold shift, right? So 45s or solid lines. Gradients help so much by making sky bracket. Absolutely. It's a very useful tool. That's what you did for the solar cups. Yes, exactly. Exactly what I did for the solar cups. Um, so a straight line, uh, curved lines, right? Click one point. What is it? Oh, it's a, uh, is it click and drag? I don't use this ever. There you go. So click and drag a line and then pull out for a curve tool. <laughs> you can tell I never use curve tool. Uh, polyline, click for polys. You need to close the poly. You go back to the circle, start. Uh, continuous curve, how does this one work? I don't use this one either. Oh yeah, there you go, like a spline. Spline tool. Uh, we have lasso fill. There you go. So I think they've added this default now. Um, this is literally, I think, the same thing that we just downloaded, which was that ice cream tool. You can just get it in Clip Studio Paint by default. So you can also use lasso fill. Um, then we have rectangle tool. Pretty self-explanatory. Click and drag. If you want it to be a square, click, hold shift, and it's going to lock you so that you are always a square. Like if you don't want a rectangle and you want it uh, a perfect square, hold shift. Um, I think if you hit alt, sorry, click. No, not for this one. Um, but yeah, line square versus rectangle. Um, ellipse tool. So this is your circle, right? Um, ellipses are oblong. If you want it to be a circle, again, hit shift. It's going to lock it just like the square is going to lock its proportions, right? Um, the circle tool is a little different um, in that when you let go, um, sorry, you might have to click and then you're like trying to click other things and you're like, why can't I click other things? Click again so that the, the circle is locked in rotation. So if you had a spline like this, right, you're going to let go and it's going to let you rotate it, right? If you let go and they're like, I have a circle. The circle doesn't need a rotation to it, right? But the program will always still put it into rotation. You'd be like, why can't I, why can't I do stuff? What, what am I doing wrong? It's because your circle is still in rotation, even though it's rotating, but because it's a circle, you can't see it rotating. So just click again to um, set it down basically. So you off click to make the circle, click it again to lock the rotation of the circle. Um. Oh, and these are also pretty useful too. So this is your line. So you just have a circle outlined. Um, this would be a closed filled circle, right? Like that. Oh, that's a, a good way to show it actually. So like when I make the circle, I let go and you're like, what the heck? It's not filling in. It's because you're on that rotation. So if I click again, it's gonna fill. Um, so there's that. Oh, and if you wanted a different line. Um, so over here, you'll see your colors. If I want like the outline to be black in the middle to be orange, um, you just set your secondary color, right? And then that's your circle. Spline is a very fun word. I agree. Um, so that's what those do. Again, brush size, opacity. There's all those kinds of sorts of things in here. Um, and then the exact same thing as the poly is the same for the polygon. Um, you can set round corners as well for these. Same with like the rectangle and stuff. You can uh, set your corners to be more rounded and you can adjust the level of rounded corner as well. Um, then you can also adjust how many ellipse corners, I think too, can't you? Castle corners. I thought the polygon had like, you can set how many sides. Isn't that crazy? Must not be, I must be crazy. I must be crazy. I can't find it. <laughs> I thought there was like, a, you could cho choose how many points it has. 
Maybe it is, but I've forgotten. I don't use it very often, so. Um, there's that. And then your eraser tool, you can choose what kind of erase, so whether you want it to be a hard erase, um, soft, like a uh, tool erase, um, rough, or vector, multiple layers. So this would be like, it would erase everything on every single layer. Um, snap eraser, kneaded eraser. So there's a whole bunch. Um, I'm just going to select rough because that's what I set it as. Um, yeah, and then there is text for adding your text. Pretty self-explanatory there. Um, you can go through, choose like your fonts, right? Arial font, here's a whole bunch of fonts. Um, your size of your text, your alignments, uh, bold, italicized. Text direction, sometimes that can be useful for some people. Um, and then yeah, the, what color you want. And yeah, that is your text. Here is the ruler. So how the ruler works. Um, there's a bunch of different rulers. I'm just gonna show you guys the symmetrical ruler because it'll probably be your most used one. Set your brushes to transparent and use the texture brush you want to erase. Yes, yep. So if you wanna erase with the brush that you're using, so say we want to keep using that mapping brush, that's where I use that C button and I come down to here and I use the opacity. So that is gonna keep whatever brush you're using and make it like an eraser. So that's why I really like C and that's what I use mostly. I don't really use the eraser tool at all. I mostly always just use whatever brush that I'm using and I just press C to erase. So that's that's how I do it and that's why I kept that button as um, basically my eraser and I didn't put one of their hotkeys on C because I'm just so used to using it. Yeah, Alpaca Fire has the same thing. Yep, it's, I think some people call it the razor tool or something like that. I, I'm like, it, it's just like painting with opacity. <laughs> it's just what I call it. The opacity paint <laughs> or the opacity color. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys the symmetrical ruler. So if you choose down here, there is symmetrical. I don't know if you have to scroll down at all to see it, but symmetrical ruler. How this works, you're gonna click on somewhere and uh, drag. So if you just click, it's just gonna put a line down randomly. But if you click and drag, you're gonna pick your direction that you want the symmetry. So what this is gonna do is it gonna, it's gonna allow you to draw on both sides at once, right? So I, you guys will see me use this a lot too. Um, kinda looks like a face. Yay! <laughs> but you see me use this a lot, right? So this is your symmetry tool. If you want this symmetry to be perfectly straight, again, you click, drag, and press um, shift. See how it's gonna snap that? To be straight up and down, right? So you're gonna wanna shift, click, and let go. It doesn't matter how like high you draw it up, it's just gonna keep drawing, basically. Um, and you can also stack these rulers as well on top of each other. So say we needed to do like four points, you can draw on it again, and then um, you can choose what uh, ruler you're on, I believe is how it works. Show all rulers, is how I do it? I can't remember, I, I haven't done this for a while. I don't remember how it works. It shows up purple. How's it work again? Snap angle. Oh, maybe it's number of lines? Oh, there you go, it's number of lines. That's what it is, you don't click and drag. So if you did four, it's gonna add four and then I think that means you can draw. There it is, ta-da! I couldn't remember how to do it. <laughs> Sudden Pokemon design, exactly. So this is like really useful if you wanna make like really elaborate like clothing items or something, right? Like maybe we got like this fancy gem thing or something, I don't know, you know? So that can be really useful for like clothing or trying to make something that's symmetrical sped up. Uh, a lot of the time it's just, I use mirror, but you can do it like as many um, points as you want in that guide. Oh, another thing. Say you drew your thing 
and you want something asymmetrical on this, but you don't want to delete your ruler because you want to come back and add some things to it. So over here, you actually can see the ruler on your layer, right? Multiple things, you can click this ruler and you can drag it down to another layer. So you can move that ruler around. So you could drag it off the layer and then see how there's no more symmetry back on this layer. So you can drag it off and then drag it back on. So you can do your asymmetry, you know, and then just drag it back on. Sorry, I'm on the wrong layer. Drag it back on and draw again. Or you can click on this layer and if you right click, you can um, hit show ruler. So right now, the little check mark is on saying that the ruler is being displayed right now. If you click on it again, it's gonna turn it off and it's gonna put an X through it, right? So this will make it now so that you can draw asymmetrically. So you say you had this design in the middle that was not um, symmetrical, but you need to go back and use this ruler again. If you click on it, it's gonna bounce that ruler back again. Or you can right click and hit show as well. And just put that ruler back on. And then now you still have your ruler if you wanna keep going in and adding um, designs. So that can be really useful if you need to touch up something that's not um, symmetrical and then go back and redo some symmetrical stuff. So you can turn those rulers on and off. Um, what else is there? That is pretty much everything you need to know on this side. Um, this is for vector lines again, so you don't really need it. And yeah, I guess the stuff that's on this side that is very um, useful. You can color your layers if you need. Um, this is your nor your um, layer type. So we're just making a normal layer for now. As we go through, we will use more of these different types of um, layers and settings and stuff. But for now, just make sure that you're on normal. This is your opacity level. So if I draw something, right? I draw my smiley face. Smiley face. Um, your opacity, you can go down and up, drag that, and that just makes your layer um, opacity change. So we're gonna keep it at 100 for now. Um, this is your clipping layer. We'll probably go over that later. Um, your reference layer, I explained. Um, <laughs> this can be sometimes useful. Set as draft layer. Uh, what this will do is if you have like a um, you have like a sketch layer that you don't want exported in your final image and you're like worried about forgetting to turn it off or you don't want to accidentally merge your line art to your sketch because disaster you do not want to do that this is really handy you go to here and you hit set as draft this is gonna make a little pencil show up here and turn this blue. Now, if I had another layer below it, and like, let's draw with this color. We drew the hair, but we don't want the smiley face anymore. We just want the hair, right? Well, sometimes what happens is you're like merging layers later on when you're like condensing things, and you might hit like right click, and you wanna like merge um, down, where is it? Oh, I can't because like there's another layer. So say we want the body, right? So I right click here and I'm gonna go uh, merge with layer below, which is also control E on your keyboard. Makes it really easy to accidentally merge things that you don't wanna merge together, especially if it's a draft layer. So I can merge the hair and put these two layers into one layer now, right? Then sometimes you're just like clicking and merging things down and then you accidentally merge your good stuff to your bad stuff and you don't want that, make sure you just put this little draft layer on your bad and then you can't accidentally merge it down. So even if I press Control E, it's not gonna merge that in. And when you're exporting, it will not export this layer. So if I saved this, the smiley face would be gone. Like if I went to export a final image, the smiley face would be gone. It doesn't include it. So really useful, very handy. Hydrate and stretchy, thank you, liquor. Art is nightmare scenario, absolutely. Also, hello, uh, Billy Van, welcome in. Hydration. So, 
Um, and then, so that's the, the draft layer. If you want to lock your layer, so say you don't want anything to happen to it, no settings changed or anything, or don't actually do accidentally click on it in any way, you can hit lock layer. So you're not gonna be able to mess around with any settings or anything on it. That's what the little lock icon does. This one is also very, very useful. So say I wanted to color only what is on my layer. If you use this little lock transparent pixels, it means it's going to put a lock on everything that is transparent, meaning you can only draw where you have drawn on that layer before. So if we click on this lock transparent and say we want to draw or change this black color to something that is blue, for example, right? So I can change my pen to blue here. Now, because I have this little transparent and lock symbol, I can click on this and I can draw over and it's only going to color where I have this, um, have drawn on this layer, right? So that is super useful if you're like wanting to color line art or something like that. I use this locks transparent pickles, pickles, <laughs> pickles, uh, pixels button. Um, and it's really, really handy. So there is that. Um, I do use this one um, sometimes when I'm drawing because it's just really uh, convenient. It's another way. Cone scammer. I did get the cone. I did get the cone. I did do it. Um, if you want to change the layer color. So sometimes when I'm sketching, I'll be like sketching the head shape and then sketching the... Um, uh, like hair or something and because like both colors are black it might be sometimes hard to see um, I'll use this sometimes as just a quick way to change the color so if you click on this little uh, change layer color button here it'll bring that and it's going to change it by default to blue but you can also change this color to be whatever you want to so like I can make it pink right and it just automatically makes whatever is on that layer it'll just make it that color um, so that can be really, really handy um, if you're trying to see better or something or um, you can change this color. Like if I wanted this color now to stay permanent this color, you can also just right click it and um, hit rasterize. If you clicked on this rasterize, see how it got rid of that little box that was there? Now this is permanently pink. So like if I click it again, it's gonna go blue. Bec this will show this exact color only on black, pure black, okay? So because it's pink right now, it's showing as a lighter color than what is here because we had that color before as pink. So if I turn this off and I make this pure black again, oh, see, this is how I do it. You can either fill over it. I hit control U it's gonna bring up this little dialog box and you can change the colors of things on this. So if I want it to be pure black, we set this just to zero, so we get our pink color back. Um, if you turn the saturation completely down and the um, luminosity completely down, you're gonna turn it to black, right? And then you can click this again and it's back to being the blue color that we wanted. So if you're like, why is it not the color that I put into here? Uh, you might not have pure black um, as your default color, so. Um, there's that. And I think that's pretty much everything. So we had the new layer button, which we taught earlier. We have, this is a vector layer. Uh, I won't go into vectors because I don't think they'll use it for illustration much, um, but it can be easy, useful for other things. Um, and then we have a new folder. So if I'm wanting to group all of my work together, you can hit the folder, you can click and drag them into the folder and it'll just like category, categorize them down and in a little bit. So I click on this one, put it in, down and in. Um, and again, it keeps the same layer con convention. So this is the bottom layer and these are the tops. Um, so it stacks on top. Oh, one thing with your folders in Clip Studio Paint, when we get into changing the blend modes, you want to make sure that this folder is not set to normal, okay? 
you're actually going to want to set to through, which is the, at the very, very top. You can't see it because it's behind the fish right now, but it's the very, very top one. So see now it says through. Um, that will make it so all these layers show properly with their proper blend modes. If it's on normal, it might show like some of your layers not showing properly. So make sure that it's on through. You'll see later. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you can also double click to change any layer names and stuff. So the folder could be like, my work. Right, here's my beautiful piece of art. Um, you can also close folders and you press the, oh yeah, you press the eyeball to hide and show your layers as well. And you shouldn't be able to draw. See how it says X? You can't draw on a layer that's not showing. Or on a folder, because you can't work on folders. So, now my brush is back. Wow! I think that's everything. <laughs> I think that's everything that is super basic. Again, you choose your colors down here on a color wheel. Um, I have my color wheel set to be a triangle shape. Ah, yeah, here it is how to switch. Um, triangle is just like more accurate to how colors are actually shown. So I just use the triangle. But you can also use the square as well. Whatever you want to use. Whatever you like. Um, this is your hue slider. So this is changing the colors. Then you also have um, your saturation is in the middle. So if you want no saturation and lighter shade, you're going to be at white, right? No saturation and darker, going straight down, you're going to get black. Now, if you add saturation, meaning you're adding more of that hue color, you're going to the right, okay? And then, yeah, everything in between is a mix of shades and saturations. So, yeah, there you go. Um, I think that's everything. There's probably going to be more stuff that pops up eventually, but... Hopefully, hopefully that's a good start at least. <laughs> now can we do heads? I think we can start on heads now. Um, get our music back. I'm going to delete that. All right. Can you go say that again? <laughs> no worries. That's why we have the VOD. <laughs> so I don't have to go through it again. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna press D to bring up our pen tool. I'm gonna choose black as my color. Enjoy the lyrics in the gummy. And we are going to go check out our new, our Chapter one, lesson one, shape of the head. All right, it's time to learn how to draw anime heads. Okay. Here, I'm actually also gonna do this. I'm also gonna put this in the discourse. If you guys want it to follow along with me at the same time, you guys will have it. want to follow along with me right now it is there in the discord also crafty kaname thank you for the subby for 15 months welcome to the demon army Let's 
Galaxy. So, we're going to start by learning about anime heads and real heads. looking at their layers right now. I'm gonna make myself a folder and I'm gonna add my work into it. So you might want to do this too. Um, and again, I am gonna post my um, file. So if you want to trace along on top of my work, you're more So right now they're just kind of like talking about how you will see like a lot of um, these shapes, right? When people draw, right? Um, for heads. So we're kind of learning. Uh, these are like proportions to map out a head because like there's a lot of different like complicated points between like eyes and ears and shapes there's like a golden ratio that they call for like a um perfectly pleasing face to look at right um so your eyes aren't too high or too low because that'll like make something be off-putting and stuff do you need the lesson for the files nope you can just uh i have in the the discord like a little uh thing like this that you can grab So they're explaining that this guideline is a way to show um, this golden ratio. So these circles and lines and stuff that we make um, are kind of a, an easy way that artists has figured out how to draw like a perfect head essentially, right? Um, and in real heads, so like not anime heads, but like real not like, what do you call this, like a uh, realism. In realism, for a person's head, the first and second line, um, like this would be the bottom of the chin, right? But uh, it would be one to one, sorry. So this would be like one, one increment, this is one increment, so it's the same. This is equal to this, right? But for anime, we make them look a little cuter, right? So we don't give them as long of a chin. So they say it's about here that we come down to. So I don't know what that is, like 70% of double. So it's just, just short um, of one. Um, they're also explaining like when you're drawing, I should be using their pen. Um, so we're going to be drawing a line down the center. Um, if you find like drawing a straight line is too difficult and stuff, I would personally suggest practicing it. It's not going to, um, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, some people, like some artists will even do like straight line practicing and stuff. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. But try your best to get used to drawing as straight of a line as possible um, down. They're saying like if you can't do a straight line, you can also like click and hit shift. And it'll also draw you a straight line for you. Um, but I, I would just suggest just do your best. You'll get better at it. It'll get easier. The more that you practice it, the easier it's going to get. Um, but yes, if you do need to, you can hit shift and click, but I, I would just say, oh, sorry, how are the files supposed to be open? Right, because they're, uh, it's a PSD file for anybody that can, um, so psd.psd files are for Photoshop, right? 
but Photoshop is like an industry standard. So any art program should be able to open PSD files, .psd. So that's what, like, if you're gonna be like giving out layer files and stuff, a lot of times it's best just to export them as PSD so that any art program can use them. Um, but Clip Studio uses .csp, which is Clip Studio Paint Files. Um, so if you want to import those files that are .psd, come up here, you're gonna hit File, and you're gonna go to Import. And then you're gonna go to, uh, where is it? Oh, no, sorry. I don't think it's import. I think it's open. You just go file, open. Um, and then you search for where you had it on your file. I'm not gonna open mine because it's gonna open up my actual personal files <laughs> on my computer. But yes, if you do file, open, um, you should be able to find that .psd file and then open it up. I don't think you can import PSDs from here, no. Those are just for like importing images and stuff. So that should work for you, Blaze. Let me know if it works. Got it, perfect. Perfect, perfect, that's what I like to hear. Thank you. I like having Blaze here. Because <laughs> you can help me troubleshoot. Yes. So because we are drawing um, the face just from the front, we're doing the front view right now, so this is looking at it exactly face on, our line is gonna be right in the middle. And then yeah, we're gonna make it short because we want it to be cuter. Anime, cute. Cute anime girl, cute anime waifu. <laughs> we appreciate those. So yes, this is where your jaw is going to end. This is the very tippy, tippy point. Pointiest part. Um, so to draw the jaw or the front of the head, um, sometimes you'll see people cut off the circle, um, but we'll kind of get to that later is what she says. Like for now, we're just going to like focus on um, connecting from the circle and we're going to curve it around and make a chin shaped like that. So you mark the top and then around here where the lips are gonna be, you're gonna have a little bend in it, come down to your lips. So now she says right now, what you can do is, oh, use your lasso tool. You can use the lasso tool to select what you have created so far. And we're gonna hit Control C, which is copy. You probably know that working on a computer. Control C for copy. And we're gonna hit Control uh, V to paste it. And you'll notice we copied this layer and we made a, a second layer of it. So now, another hotkey, we're gonna hit Control T. And that is gonna bring up your transform tool like this. So it's gonna put a bounding box around it. And what we're gonna do is over here on this side, we're gonna hit the vertical flip horizontal at center of rotation. Press that button. It's like the two little double arrows. And we're going to click our mouse down, but not pull out or not, um, not pull anywhere or move. Just click down and then press shift. And that's gonna make it so that no matter where I kind of pull, it's going to lock it on a hor um, horizontal pull. So we're gonna keep that same distance, right? And that is gonna make the second half of our face just like so. Um, and then I'm just gonna go back to D again Press C to get my um, eraser tool. I'm just gonna erase the extra line that it created. Just for ease of looking. Also, Fox, thank you for gifting us up to you again. Welcome in, you again. We're doing a very, very beginner lesson for um, learning how to draw anime, anime um, faces and stuff. So, um, there is our second 
path. And Fox, thank you for gifting us up to you get as well. You get welcome to the demon army. So now we have that second face. Now this is two layers. We kind of want these to be the same. So it's all one head, right? So we're going to click on that top layer and we're going to hit control E and that's going to merge that down. So now they're both on the same layer. I have extra stuff on mine. Let me erase mine. <laughs> there we go. Um, so now we have it all on one layer. Aww, thank you for gifting a usual, usual lurker like me. Aww. Thank you, Fox. We love the lurkers. As Fox would say, me and the homies, we love the lurkers. <laughs> Perfect. So that is now our jawline. We have a cute anime jawline. How did you duplicate the face? Um, so you should have your layer that you're working on. Control C is copy. Control V is paste. So you copy and paste it to transform it. Here, maybe I'll write this down. We're gonna call this tips. Oop. So when I upload, it'll still be there if anybody wants it. So, copy is control C and paste is control V. These are pluses, right? It's con you press both buttons. Um, you should know that if you know computers, I'd imagine. Um, and then transform. So that was how I got that bounding box to flip it to the other side is control plus T. I had to think about it. <laughs> control T. Enjoy the lurk, Anubis. <laughs> Let's go. Um, so yeah, there you go. Those are the buttons that I press. Oh, and then in the transform button, it was right here. So it's this flip horizontal. It's like these two arrows back to forth. This one will flip it vertically, right? Up and down. This will flip it left and right. You can see the text in there. Okay? So flip the face to the other side is that button. all this sketching. Ben Lurkin decided to appear because you brought up Lurkin, no worries. <laughs> Lurk is good. Perfect, okay. Blaze says they've got it. That's what I like to hear. So I'm going back now to my, um, my sketching layer and we're gonna press D to get back to our pen tool. Ah, and they're just saying, what you can do too, remember you can press uh, J and that is gonna flip your uh, canvas. So if you needed to do like any like touching up, like a, like, oh, this needs to come a little bit this way or something, oops. You can like um, touch things up. Like I'm like, oh, this is a little too far this way. So I can make it a little more even. So I'm using my C to go bounce back and forth between my eraser and my pen, right? And then my D. Or if you're using D and E as your eraser, you can use those two as well. But I use C for my razor pen. Okay, so now, um, now that we have J flip my canvas back to normal, um, now that we have this jawline, we're gonna add in the hairline, is what they said. So you're gonna add it from, your hairline is gonna kind of come up like this and come across, okay? And come down like that. And again, we can hit, I just press my F key. I gotta get used to these new hot keys. And again, I'm just flipping between things like my eraser and my pen tool cleaning things up, making it more exact. Okay. So there is our hairline. So we're just connecting from the corner of the jaw, that horizontal line coming up, making a square cross and coming back down. Okay. 
for them to draw. <laughs> I said draw it like a trapezoid. So they're saying here you can now erase your guidelines. So you can erase this middle point. Because you don't need it anymore. So now you have this. Oh, and they said you can erase the bottom of the circle. Um, which one is their circle? I don't really want to delete my circle, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this circle. So I'm going to hit Control Copy and Control Paste. And I'm going to drag this circle layer into my folder. Right, so that's gonna pop it down here. Um, I'm gonna take their circle layer, which was this two, I'm gonna turn it off. And um, this circle is now part of this group, right? Of my own work. So I can now erase this guide. We don't, no longer need the bottom of the circle. They said. Um, so they're saying later in the course we're gonna go through facial features and stuff more in depth. Um, but for now, we're going to draw our eyes onto our person. Um, and so how they draw their eyes, they say, like it, it can be different for different artists. Um, but how they draw their eyes is they have the top of the eye on the bottom of this guideline here. So the top of the eye is going to touch the top of that line. That's what they said. So then they start drawing and your eye is going to be kind of like a little almond shape. And yeah, for now, like we're just kind of learning and getting practice of where things go. So don't worry too much about like your shapes and stuff being perfect. We'll get better practice at that stuff later on, but just do your best. And then I'm just going to hit the J key. I think they actually control copy and paste because right now it doesn't matter. But if you want practice, you can draw it on the other side. I'm just gonna hit control copy, control paste, control T, merge, and move it over to the right spot. Like that. Ta-da! Because <laughs> like for now, we're just like getting rough shaping down. Maya's gonna look like a beaten up clay head. It's fine, it's fine, Blaze. It all comes with practice. And that's what we're gonna be doing like through the week. Um, it is advised, um, you know, as we progress, like we have one day where we have our course and our lesson. Um, it's best if you can like keep drawing and keep practicing like throughout the le week before we move on to our next um, kind of session too. So anytime you have like, just take like five minutes a day, draw a couple of heads on a piece of paper and stuff like that, get some practice in. Um, it's not gonna hurt, so. Um, and then they say you just add your eyebrows. Your eyebrows are gonna be up here. Mine are not even, that's okay. <laughs> and then down here, you'll have the mouth. And then a neck, she says. And then because we're drawing anime, um, anime necks are very thin, they said. When I look at theirs, they always tend to draw it about halfway point of the eye when I watch this person do their eyes or their heads. So that's what I've been kind of using as a guideline, like where my eye is, it's kind of like halfway point for my neck. But yes, I'm sure they'll go more into it um, later. But for now, we're just kind of learning what is the front shape, how to draw a side head shape and stuff. So, Wah! sip, 
stretch and shrimp. Thank you, Chance. And he's shrimped. Actually, I should close my window. It's very dark outside. And it's like a fishbowl of people looking at me. I forgot it was open. Hold on. No looking at the lily. No sneaking peeks at the lily. Here we go. This is a private art session. <laughs> All right. So there we go. Okay, so they said copy and paste the circle over. For the second one, we already have one. Ready to go. All right, so now we're basically gonna be doing um, a three quarter head view. So they're saying like, you have like, for the front view, Right, you have that guideline that's just gonna be going down the center. For this one, three quarter, we want the center, like, you know, you look at me and my head is straight. When I turn to the side, that center line is also going to move to the side. So they did, they showed it like this, right? So as you move your head, your center line now is gonna be over here. <laughs> private oh we, we gotta go you guys are fine you guys are fine there's just all those suspicious people walking outside mm. you got permission you got permission i'm like what is a vampire <laughs> you got you got permission to come in um okay so we got uh the line to the sign hello catastrophe what are we working on here so we are doing like a beginner art course we are using um, Tusham and Coloso, or I am. Uh, I've been using it to try to learn. And um, we're kind of just be going through the course and trying to learn how to art together. So it's like a super, super beginner course. Um, I went through like all settings and shortcuts and stuff like that. And um, yeah, now we're just starting some um, actual drawing to finish up today. So sorry, like the first course, it's not gonna be a lot of drawing. But um, we'll at least get us started, get us a little bit of homework um, for practicing drawing some circles and some heads as some homework. Um, yeah, so we got the third hard, or third quarter view. So we're gonna move that center line over, is what they're saying. I need to mush all my layers now, here we go. Remember, control E just pushes the layer, the top layer, down to the bottom layer. So that's all I was doing there. All right, so now we got this new center line. Ah, keep remembering, I gotta press D. Okay, what did it say? Mm. So they're saying like, um, you know, like, uh, you could kind of think of it like a piece of paper too, when you're turning your head, like the paper sideways, um, like that line in the middle is going to change. So like this half of the rectangle is going to be smaller than this half, right? When you turn it to the side. Um, but our faces aren't actually entirely rectangles, so you're gonna get more of a curve, right? Because people's faces have that round, eggish, eggish type shaping to it, right? So yeah, we wanna we wanna apply that three-dimensionally. So instead of a straight line, we're actually gonna have bit of a curve and then if I don't like a line I'm just hitting control Z right Right, sorry, I forgot something, right? Um, we're not making our chin go all the way to the bottom, right? Remember, we're gonna do, cause anime girls are cute. So we wanna shorten that um, chin a little bit. I forgot about that. So 
we're actually gonna wanna come down and end at that line. like that cool something like that and then our face is not completely smooth right so we do have a nose and some lips so we're gonna do we're gonna come down so remember when I said this is gonna be the top of our eyes right so if you like look at my face, for example, right? My nose comes down um, past like the, the top of my eyes kind of thing. So we're gonna wanna come follow that curve. Uh, let me do this on another line. This is gonna be our guide. So I'm gonna turn this blue so you guys can see that it's a guide versus what I'm drawing. Okay. Um, so. These are guides. There you go. Okay. So we are going to follow follow that straight bit or that curve until we reach like our eyes. And then once we reach our eye, we're gonna wanna come out for the nose, right? So we're gonna sweep out. Add a little, little button nose. And we're gonna come in. And then we're gonna add a little lip. And then a little bottom lip. And then go back to following that line. Okay? So now we have a little bit of a side profile for our three quarter. Let's clean up. Give this nose a little more curve to it. Hello Rosa, Gamba Lily, thank you. We're learning together today. Question, your line seems thinner. Is that because of the stream or uh, I'm using 15? Are you using 15 for your brush size? And are you using um, 4,000 4, pixel by 2,500 pixel? Uh, it could be also your tablet settings. Do you have a tablet? I assume you're working on a tablet, Blaze. And your anti-aliasing, this is all set to the same here. Uh, an X-Pen one. Um, so like for me, the more pressure you use, the bigger line you're gonna get, right? Is yours like that? Like if you touch very lightly, is your thin pen line really light? And if you push really hardly, is it like a fat line? Because I'm like barely touching the screen, essentially, when I draw. Because um, if it's drawing, if you're like barely touching it, it seems to stay the same. Okay, so for yours, um, your, your touch setting might be off. Is this turned on for you up here? This little finger here, use different tools with finger and pen. That's one. Um, and then also touch gesture settings. 
You don't see this at all? On this top bar. Huh. Let's see. Because that is an important thing to set up. Because, yeah, you want your pen tool to um, be dynamic, basically, with your tablet. Properties. It might be a command bar. Yes. Hit window and hit command bar. Do you have that on the top? So window command bar will bring up this bar up the top here if you don't have it. Perfect. And you still don't have this button in the command bar or now that you have the command bar, you have this. It's not there. Hmm. So your touch settings might be off. Uh, clip. How do you set a dynamic pen brush? Dynamic settings. Um, on your brush. Does it have two check marks like this? If you put the two check marks, is your pen pressure button checked for the brush? It should be by default, but that's another thing you could check if yours is a solid line. It is, okay. I don't think it's that. I know sometimes it turns off. This might help. Pen pressure. Ah, pen pressure settings. So if you go file, Pen pressure settings should be on here. Pen pressure settings, here it is. Right down here, close to the bottom. That's gonna open up this, it says. Um, so I guess, yeah, I wanna make sure the pen pressure. Oh, that's just for like adjusting though. Sorry for the double music. I'll still link this because it might be useful for other people. Um, this for this is for adjusting your pen um, pressure in Clip Studio Paint. So if you have Clip Studio Paint and you're having issues with your pressure line slot looking right, um, that is a great tutorial for that by Clip Studio. Um, I know that there's like this button at the top and like sometimes it happens for people where this gets turned off and where is it? Or sometimes it's in um, Windows mode and not your tablet mode and I can't remember where that is. Clip Studio, tablet, window, mode. Like, um, setting to tablet mode. WinTab, or for tablet PC, select WinTab when using a regular graphics tablet, such as Wacom. Hold on, this might be. I know it, I, it happens to me, and this is good for everybody because sometimes it turns off on me and I have to. Google how to put it back on it sometimes like switches on it on its own. So this is a good thing to go over 
frustrates me thinking what I had to uninstall. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Fox, you know. Uh, under the using tablet service, there's an option for wood tab or tablet PC. That many under the preferences may and different options depending on where you're using. Yes, but where is this button? Use mouse mode in setting for the tablet driver should be turned on when the mouse mode is enabled by the tablet driver settings. Maybe it's in my, like, just general settings as well. I wanted a meteor to hit my room. I went through this with um, Hussy, because um, the same thing happened to them too. We spent so long trying to figure it out. Maybe it's just in my preferences. Ah, it's here. Okay, okay. <laughs> Blaze, go to file and hit preferences. Okay, preferences. And then using tablet surface, are you on WinTab or are you on tablet PC? And also, is your coordinate detection mouse use mouse mode in tablet driver settings checked on? Is your setup like this? If not, set this up <laughs> like this. <laughs> and that might help you. Display area and tablet operation area. Oh, and then this sets your operation area, but I don't think you need to worry about that one. But are your tablets, so I'm under tablet, wind tab, and that checked. I'm on wind tab, the box for coordinate box wasn't checked. Perfect, okay, so that might be okay now, Chai. Make sure that that's checked, now it is, okay. Are you able to use dynamic pen? So now when you push harder on your pen, you're gonna get more of a hard line. Whereas if you draw lightly, you're gonna get like a lighter line. Now you should have, hopefully, a dynamic pen. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. If not, it's the same. Dang it! <laughs> okay, well that's one. Um, I don't know. It might be your tablet settings. Um, so you might have to Google your X-Pen um, dynamic pen pressures. So it might be set up right now on, yeah, it could be the, the not the brush. We did double check the brush that this was turned on. We did double check this one. Um, but it could be your actual tablet pen doesn't have the dynamic brush setting on as well. Study time, Gmo! Indeed! Welcome on in. We're doing like beginner, beginner courses, so... We're teaching, uh, we're hopefully trying to fix, uh, Blaze's pen not being a dynamic pen issue at the moment. And I know sometimes Clip Studio, um, messes that up, so it was a good thing we went over it in Clip Studio, how to fix it. I need the class before this one, what do you mean? <laughs> I literally all day today, I explained what every button in Clip Studio Paint does. Well, not every button, but close, okay? All the ones you'll need. Um, but yeah, you. so everybody's tablet settings are different. Um, so I can't help with that as much, but you should be able to like um, Google where your settings are. Usually if you like press start and you Google for your actual tablet name, like mine, I type in Wacom. It'll bring up my Wacom um, settings, and then um, I can choose it. Hold on, I don't know if this will... Let me, let me see if I can bring mine up. It's this button. Did look in the thing for my tablet and pen, and I didn't see anything. I will look into it um, after stream more and try and figure it out. Okay, sorry I couldn't help much. Um, this is my brightness. I want to show my settings for Wacom. Show any personal information. It's a thought. So here it is. Ta da! So you can see I'm using a uh, Cintiq Pro 24 inch. I also have the EK uh, remote that comes with it. I'm using the Pro Pen 2. Um, but you can adjust your pen tips so your tablet will have its own settings. 
Um, my tilt sensitivity is just at normal, but my tip feel, I actually have it turned back one setting because um, I just don't like pushing on my tablet as hard. Um, just because like, I'm, I was always scared about like scratching it and stuff like that. So I just turn it down. So for this, it just means that basically like uh, a lighter pen will show up more basically. Or if you want it to be like, you have to push really hard to get a line to show up, you're just gonna go more up to the firm. Um, and then yeah, you have like, you can see your current pressure. So like, this is just a click. And then my maximum is up there, so. There's that, um, tip double, click distance, is all normal for me, my double click and right click. So you can actually set all this stuff as well in here. So your double click or your right click. And if you're also working on um, Wacom, you can set all your um, hotkeys to your key remote here as well too. So brush down, you put in, a, it's set right now for key, keystroke, um, and you can set everything in here. So, oops. And again, there's like the touch ring for mine because I have the EK remote, a whole bunch of settings in there. And uh, yeah, uh, your eraser, same idea for the pen. There's an eraser on the back. And uh, you also can calibrate your tablet. Make sure that you calibrate your tablet. Um, so how to calibrate, usually you'll hit calibrate. It'll bring up targets on each part of the um, screen. I think I can just calibrate, there you go. So you're just gonna like tap to the middle. And you're gonna wanna do this when you're in the position that you wanna draw at. And that's gonna make it so that it's more accurate to your eye um, with the parallaxing. So yeah, that's what calibrating is. So make sure you do that with your tablet too. Yeah, avoid scratches and burning through pen nibs, absolutely. Cool, well I'm sorry we didn't figure it out. Um, blaze, but you can just work with a um, a uh, straight brush as well. Um, just turn your, make your brush size for now a little bit smaller if it's gonna be easier for you, just knock it back down. Like maybe five pixels is gonna be better for you. So you can use a straight non-dynamic pen as well. And you could, I know an artist and they are amazing, Ixie, and they don't use a dynamic pen. They just use a single um, straight line pen. So don't think like, oh, if I don't have a fancy dynamic pen, I can't make good art. That's not how that works. A wonderful artist could make beautiful art with a stick and mud, okay? So you can still use a non-dynamic brush and you'll still be absolutely fine. But yeah, if you wanna look into it later, you can. Art is art, exactly. Okay, so back to lesson. So we've got this thing. And again, for this course too, like, um, you don't have to, like, all these things are going to be applicable to just, like, pen and paper as well, too. Like, you don't have to use a digital art um, tablet to do all this fancy stuff. Like, I've been practicing on, um, I bought myself a little notepad so that I could practice quicker. So it's sometimes a lot of work to bring up my clip studio and everything and get everything set up and stuff. And I'm like, some days I'm like, man, it's so much work to like open my tablet and stuff like that and sit down and actually like get down. I'm like, I just wanna study for five minutes. So just get a piece of paper, get a pencil and practice. Like it's, it's like quick, easy. I have a book, I'll date it so that I can watch my progress go. Um, and I can just sit down and just be like, some days it's like, I don't wanna draw, but I should still draw every day. Draw like one eye, just open, open the book, draw one eye. Open the book, draw some straight lines, draw a circle. Like it, it doesn't have to be a piece of art. You're just practicing, practicing holding the pen, like practicing um, getting used to that feeling of drawing. So if it's like hard to practice, just tell yourself, start small. And a lot of times you'll find that once that pencil hits the paper, and even though you said, well, I'll just draw one circle, you'll find yourself, you'll be like, well, I'll draw a few more because I'm here kind of thing. <laughs> and it'll actually make you study and practice longer. So try to just like draw one circle, even if you're not in the mood for drawing, get a pen, get a paper and just draw. So yeah. Okay, so we have this side of the face that's turned. So this is our new center line, right? Um, but we're still gonna want that, uh, the chin, right, that we had. 
Also, why is this on? What did I do? I merged layers that weren't supposed to be merged. There we go. It's just this one I need to delete. Here we go. Crisis averted. If you can make stick figures, you're a buddy of mine. See? Exactly. Also, steak and mud. That's not my kind of steak. You like, you like, uh, your steaks with mud, Gmail? I know you said, I know you're making a joke of my stick and mud, okay? <laughs> I get it. Um, all right, so, I'm back on my sketching layer. Actually, I'm gonna put this on my guide layer. So, we're gonna make ourselves a little bit of a guide here. So, we gotta draw out this other side of the jawline. So about the same place where that mouth is, right? That mouth is kind of gonna be our anchor. And we're gonna come in and make that same edge of the cheek. Um, and then we have our chin that's gonna be coming across. It's gonna be at a little bit of an angle because we're turned now, right? It's not gonna be a straight across line. It's gonna be a little bit more of an angle. And then we're going to come out gonna go back up to I guess you can make it straight actually it's still hers is straight let's do what they're doing don't fall into old habits Lily okay so there is our rough head that's now turned to the side A little bit shorter. Okay. So now we're going to draw in the side of the head that's a little bit rounded. And then we're gonna draw in the ear, just as a reference. So um, in general, the top of the ear is gonna be at the top of the eyes, right? So we're gonna come draw an ear and we're gonna connect it to the bottom of our jaw. Add a little shape. Something like that. little round ear. Okay. Then we are going to draw the other side of the cheek. Oh wait, this is our guide. Let me get back to sketching. Just so you guys can see, I should have this. Not as wide. It's not perfect, but it's on there. Okay, and then, um, so we're gonna draw this other side of the cheek, but our, this this is like really square and not perfect. So we're gonna add in um, like the little roundness and softness of the little cheek chub and stuff into this. So we're gonna come down off the eye because the eye comes in a little bit, right? So we're getting rid of that little bit. We're coming, this is gonna be the top of our eyebrow, right? It's hard to, so this is gonna be our eyebrow up here. And the top of the eye comes in off the circle. And then we're gonna be back out to that cheek point. And then we're gonna come around the lips. And we're gonna come, actually I need to come down a little lower. out to that line and then use our way back to that point. Mm -hmm. 
think my line is a little bit round. Okay. And then we don't want this to round it out a bit. Select my sketch, Control T. I'm just gonna shorten it a little bit. So my chin was a little long. Beauty of using digital art. Again, I'm still learning too, so mine's not perfect either. <laughs> but there we go. That is an edge of the face. So now we can get rid of um, some of these guidelines here. The dance demo. Um, okay, so then now we're gonna add in our eye area for the side. So we're gonna make a little eye. The eye is gonna be a little bit shaped differently. Um, the eye will come up a little bit shorter, and it's gonna be because it's on the side like this, a little bit different of a shape. So then we say try to like imagine an almond for the eye. A lot of artists will say. So there is the one. Might need to make it a bit bigger, but one. And then this one is going to be um, even shorter because it's going to be hidden by the nose bridge, right? But we still go up to that eye area. Top of the eye on the top of the line. And the bottom. Okay. I think my bottom needs to be a little wider. Oh, and I'm actually gonna make this eye just a little bit bigger. Oh, also, when you are doing uh, transforms as well. Um, if you click your thing, you can like make it different sizes. Shift will keep it the same size, right? Um, or you could also, if you want to make it bigger from the middle, if you do shift and alt, it's going to make it scale from the middle instead of the side. Okay. So that will be helpful to know. So I'm hitting shift and I'm hitting alt. And I'm just going to make that eye a little bit bigger. Also, uh, program power! Thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Buyers. Go, go! Close enough. Again, not perfect, but we're just starting to learn our rough shaping, anyways. Okay? So. Oh, 
Also, what flipping your canvas does is it basically gives you like a fresh look at your own art and you're going to see it with like a different set of eyes and perspectives. So you'll be able to see like things that stand out or don't look right or anything like that by flipping your canvas lots. So also Bootcaster, thank you for the follow and welcome to the Fox Fires. No, no. Also a some purrs and a yan yeah. Nya nya for you. Purr, 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 purrs. And then, so that should be our face from the side now. Um, so they're just explaining the neck. Um, you can't, like, obviously, if you're drawing a neck from the front, it's gonna make you look like eh, your neck is tipped in because like when you turn to the side, your neck is also um, in the same point. So your head, chin, you can see mine, pops out a little bit, right? So you're actually gonna add a little bit of that underneath of the chin and then you're gonna come down and add that side of the neck. And then we're gonna go from the ear. That's where like kind of the back of the neck will attach here. And we're gonna add a neck, right? Something like that. Make sense? Again, it's all practice and you start to learn these things of where things should go. So this is a head at three quarter, you could also fill in our hairline if we want. They didn't do it, but let's do that as well so we keep them consistent. So again, because this is now on this side, it's gonna be thinner, right? And you're actually not gonna see it, so it's actually gonna like wrap behind the head like that, right? So there's your hairline. It might be lower than that. Well, no. That's actually pretty good. Um, so there's our hairline on there. Okay, so then we have, uh, oh, and we can erase our circle. Okay, and then I'm just gonna erase our circles, our guides. So we're gonna work on the side view next. And the side view um, is actually gonna be a little bit oblong. So this circle, we're gonna wanna use our lasso tool and we're gonna wanna circle that circle guide and we're gonna hit Control T and we're actually gonna pull on this side and make it a little bit more um, oblong shaped, okay? And this is because like when we turn sideways, our head is very long. <laughs> we have a big fat back of the head. So we're actually gonna just pull it to the side a little bit um, compared to these perfectly round circles as our guide. So this is for a side head view, which some people find like these views like really tricky. Um, and they actually give a really good um, tip for drawing this that I actually really enjoyed. I got to do a little bit of this practice when I was on um, vacation. So I have watched some of these. I got a head start. So I'm gonna hit D and I am on the right layer. And I'm gonna make a guide. Okay, so we're gonna draw kind of the rough in for the chin. We always start with the chin, right? The chin is kind of being our base guide here. So we're gonna draw a slightly angled line to our cute 70%. Maybe I'm a little bit, maybe I need a little more cute. So somewhere about there. And we're going to draw up into um, the circle as well. Oh, they said, um, also we need to have our middle line, right? Uh, 
our center line. For this is the exact middle of the side of our face. And then we're gonna draw the ear just as a, a guideline to help us find the bottom of that jaw tooth. So we're gonna draw a little ear here. So remember the top of your ear is gonna hit the top of that line because you want your, your ears basically will go from your mouth to the top of your eye. And that is the zone for your um, ear. So we're gonna just make a little rounded D shape for our ear. And we can add in some lines so we know it's the ear. Roughly. Bottom of the lobe. All right. And then we're going to connect um, the bottom of our jaw up. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm just gonna go to sketching. So we wanna connect it to here. And the jaw has a bit of a, a turn in it again. Um, and they say too, a lot of artists will also not draw this area. So they give a little um, tip here. They say like, have this part right here um, disconnected because you are technically drawing um, like skin on where skin overlaps because you're gonna have the neck down here, right? Um, so this kind of just is a way to show that like, Technically, it's all the same color, but you want a little bit of definition there still in anime. Um, so some artists will not draw it completely. They'll color like the line or something to make it blend in. Um, but what they do with their work is they just leave like a little disconnect um, between the two. And then um, we're gonna draw in the neck. So we're gonna do a little bit of a Swoop. Like that. And then we'll draw the back of the neck. So we're going to connect at the back of the head. The back of the skull to the neck. Right, so this is like your shoulders right here. Okay. So then now out of this straight line guide on here, we're gonna start um, with the nose. So the nose is going to be the highest um, point. It's the point on your face that like sticks out the most. So it's going to be the furthest out. So we're gonna come down off the, the bridge, right? This is your eyebrow up here. We're gonna come in for the eye. And then we're gonna come out for the nose. And then, okay. And then um, we're gonna go and I'm gonna draw another guideline. So we got the, the nose here and we're gonna draw another straight line this is gonna help us fall like have all the pieces of like the nose um, and the top lip bottom lip and the chin and stuff all be in a line that's gonna be lower than the nose point so this guide is gonna help us make sure that we're aligned here okay so we're gonna draw a line from the tip of the nose down um, to the chin. So a little diagonal like that. And then we wanna come down for the nose. Okay. 
And then we're gonna come out to the line for the top lip. Out for the top lip. We're gonna make a little curve in. Then out again for the bottom lip. And then down on the chin. Like that. And then when we get rid of our lines, we have the side of a face. I might have uh, not come out quite enough for my nose, so I'm actually just gonna pull that. Use my lasso tool. I'm just gonna grab the front of the face here with my guide. Oh, um, if you wanna change two layers at once while you are transforming, hit control or shift for, shift will do all the layers in between, control will just pick the next, um, the layer that you click on. Um, so I hit control and I tapped this. If you tap it again, it'll unselect. So I'm gonna select both my guide and that. And I'm just gonna hit control T. And now when I move this, it's gonna just pop that out just a little bit. I'm just gonna give myself just a little bit more of um, a chin. Okay? So basically from there, I just put my, when I did my diagonal, I should have had it a little bit more straight down. I, I curved it a little bit too much, I think. Um, my nose actually might be a little bit too much. This wedge might be a little off too. So this is again, you're just kind of like practicing and you'll learn. over time. The more you draw and the more you do, the better it'll get. Like I said, I'm still learning myself, so it's not perfect yet either. But. We'll get there. We'll get there. So that is the side of the face. Yeah, and then I just say erase your guides. this on the right layer. And then for the eye, um, we are on the, the eye is gonna be turned to the side. But we're still gonna have that top. So we're kind of making like almost like a little triangle here because we are turned to side. So again, try to think of like an almond shape. Like it's kind of like an almond that's kind of cut in half is kind of like the, the shape that you're going to be making for the eye. I know I've heard a lot of artists describe it as an almond for the eye, which is why we have almond eyes as well. Uh, I think mine's a little bit close. Let me lasso tool. A little bit more of an angle, maybe a little bit bigger this way. There we go. And then our hairline. Oops. What did I do? 
What did I do? Sketching layer. There we go. this. Also, uh, the Animal Man! Thank you for the follow and welcome to the Foxfires. Go, go! So our hairline will be probably higher up because we had it higher up on this one. Something like that. Oh, we didn't draw any of our eyebrows. So our eyebrows are going to go here somewhere. Something, something like that. And again, eyebrow position, um, it can all be like a bunch of different things. So like eye shape, sizes, eyebrows and stuff. Those are all like you'll change the different um, sizes and positions. Like if you want more of like a happy, excitable character, like they're gonna have eyebrows that are a little bit higher. Or if you want more serious ones, they're gonna have like straighter, more closer to the eye type um, eyebrows and stuff. So all that is gonna be um, key into making more like um, character faces and stuff and different faces and stuff like that. Um, but right now we're just trying to get a golden ratio and just trying to get used to um, drawing roughly ahead. Once you get more advanced, you can um, start messing around with those ratios and stuff um, to create more um, different looking faces. But it's like, if we had like, uh, you know, eyes that are like, you know, too far in, <laughs> it's not gonna look good, right? <laughs> or too far out, like, it's going to mess with um, the stuff. But like, People will have very small differences, like, oh, this person might have eyes that are more closer together, right? Or something like that. And there's a point where it will still look okay, but if you go too far, you lose the closeness to that face golden ratio. Um, and that's when it starts to become like off putting or like uncanny valley and stuff like that kind of thing. Um, and it might make your drawings look bad. Like, you can draw as good as you want. I think they'll. Uh, talk about this too later you can draw like a perfectly beautiful piece but if you have like one eye that's different than the other like if I just look I'll use their art so to sham because they like kind of explained this like if you have um, a beautiful piece of art right here's a beautiful artwork by senpai you know um, but you have like the mouth that's like way too long. You can you can draw and be a beautiful artist, but if your original sketches and proportions of your face are off, it's going to feel off in Uncanny Valley, no matter how good of an artist you are. So that's why we really practice um, these ratios. Where's our original? We, we practice this golden ratio so that we get used to kind of roughly where things should go and what size they should be. And then later on, when we have that experience and that knowledge, we can start messing around and making more unique face shapes and stuff like that. So good artists <laughs> but yeah and like it can go for like a lot of different things like the width here or like you know like you could have this be too low for example right and it just looks off right <laughs> like size is a big difference and placement is a big difference so that's why we learned this just as a little example <laughs> on the road to become an Ark Knight artist? I want to be. You gotta start small. You gotta start somewhere. Um, yeah, so this is our three 
sides um, and then they do talk a little bit about high angles and low angles um, which I haven't actually practiced yet um, and it's probably getting a little late to continue on for now so we might go over that part um, later um, so I would say this is still really good practice just starting um, out with this so we we're like Lily I got this how do I practice it now <laughs> if you are a beginner um, I would suggest like how to kind of learn um, and practice I it is it's getting late we've done a lot of art practice we did a lot of good lessons um, so how kind of to practice um, you'll have these um, circle guides and stuff like that. So you can start by just using the guides. I would say um, have, don't like start by copying and tracing. So like you'll have like kind of um, the good guides. Don't start by like tracing over, you know? Don't, don't start by tracing over because like tracing over it, you won't have, uh, you won't learn as well. Um, but what you'll do is for practicing and homework study is make a additional copy of your circles and stuff. Make a, make a new layer with your circles and your guides. Draw practice um, your drawings so you're gonna like again practice your straight line circle practice getting to that cute chin um, and then practice connecting this is what I was doing on vacation and I did it over and over and over again to learn my positions and stuff right so same idea connect um, do the these and then once you have your lines it's kind of a, a, a homework is good where you you do the thing on your own then critically anal analyze your own work so in order to critically analyze here what we're gonna do is bring up the the good guide and you'll see like oh I'm shrinking my um, cheeks in too much right I, I need to so then like use a correction and uh, here's another thing don't do what I was about to do you know okay these cheeks I need to fill out my cheeks and be a little bit more rounder right turn the guide back off turn your guide back off right so have it overlaid but turn it off and you're gonna try to correct that line okay so it's okay I need to be a little bit more thicker in the cheek, right? This line would seem to be pretty good, but I want to be a little bit more down there, right? And then look at the guide again. Ooh, look at that. See, like on the right hand side, I did really good, right? Um, and by doing it that way, you're going to learn a lot more than tracing over your mistakes. So make sure that when you're, you're going to redo it, Turn off the guide, try to do it on your own, and then turn the back on, guide back on and compare. And you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna keep running those cycles of like doing it on your own, comparing what you drew to the good example, and then just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's much better to do it that way. Um, at the beginning stages, if you do want to trace, just at the very, very beginning, just to try to learn what that curve is, that's fine. Like, feel free to like trace over just to try to like get the feel of what that is. That's fine. But when you want to actually get to learning, you need to turn that guide off and do it on your own. Okay. So that's like a, a, a big help. <laughs> that's how you're going to actually improve and get better. Um, so for our homework, we're going to practice. Um, doing these front view, three quarter view, and the side view. And you're gonna kind of like, the big part is gonna be learning like um, to do your guides and all that. Okay? I can delete this. 
So yes, try try that on for size. Remembering, um, turn that off. Uh, remembering all of your, there we go. All the, the different guides we did too is gonna be like part of your learning. So for this, we're not trying to make perfectly accurate, beautiful looking heads, but you're gonna be practicing like doing the circle, making sure like, oh, the circle, you know, is a little bit lower. Like this one is not as bad because the circle is drawn for you. I would suggest if you can get good enough drawing your own circle and these lines, start doing that. Like if you feel like you're more advanced and you don't need this circle, try practicing having um, this width be your equal distance apart, drawing your own circle and stuff like that. Um, and doing that, that part. But if you're still small, <laughs> probably the more I'm going to put effort into it, like I was going, yay! <laughs> um, but if you're still learning, um, just use the guide, you know, put, put your circle. So like have the main circle, put your line down, remember your bottom of your chin, um, connecting those together and just get used to putting these key parts down where they should go with those guidelines. That's all we're practicing right now and just learning the orders of using those guidelines. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, where I would start for homework. So a lot of today was not as much drawing because we were doing a lot of the setup and shortcuts and stuff like that. But that is an important part of the art too. Um, that's why I said, if anybody is going to follow along with me, I was like, if it's just gonna be me, I'll just start practicing from where I left off. But if you guys wanted to draw alongside me, like some of you guys wanted to, I was like, let's start at shortcuts and learning clip studio first. So it took a while. Um, so next Tuesday, we'll probably be doing um, a lot more drawing now that that's out of the way, so yeah. Did you guys enjoy it? Was it helpful? <laughs> my little students, my little Foxfire students. I'm gonna save this too. Um, so I'll, I'll upload um, my work here as well um, so that you guys can have it for practicing and stuff like that, so. And then, I'll upload like one of their good heads and stuff like that. Oh yeah, here's all the like um, outlines that they were saying. So this is what we're practicing, right? These are their little um, homework guides. So like we have a circle, we draw the line, we draw the chin, we draw a hairline. Um, again, side head, draw the straight line and the chin off with the circle. We add in the ear first, then we'd added the jaw line we had that little gap and we um, put in the neck and then um, off of this, we drew the nose first. Then remember we drew that extra little pie wedge, that line, so we knew that the top of our nose was the farthest thing out and then we drew in the lips um, and then you can add in your hairline after that. Um, and then three quarter as well. So we drew our circle line, we drew a straight down line, we drew a circle because our faces aren't flat, and uh, we then added our chins in, and then we added our hairlines as well. Before you end, please tend to yourself. Thank you, Gaia. I will hydrate. Got a little bit of smoothie left. So I'll upload, um, some good heads um, into the Discord. So you guys can have like um, nice stuff to uh, reference and stuff like that and check your corrections with. Um, and then is homework gonna be graded? We can absolutely, like at the beginning of next class, if you guys wanna like um, post your examples, like your pictures of your homework, like take the ones that like practice throughout the week Take the one that like you're most proud of and stuff like that, and then we will um, take a look. And if you want, I can try to give um, some critiques as well too. And uh, we can all practice along and study together. So that would be a great idea if you guys want to do that. And we'll just like at the start of each Tuesday, we'll do a little review from um, last week and look at how everybody did on homework. And then we continue on with the, the next set of homework, so. I hope I get at least a C. I believe in you, Fox. <laughs> I believe in you. But yeah, absolutely. I think that's a wonderful idea. So if you guys want some uh, some critiques from me on your head, I again, I'm learning with you guys, so I don't know how much I'll be able to critique. Um, 
but I can do my best. I'm still learning a lot too, so. We're all in this boat together. I will be showing off my heads too, so. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Where would we post these? I'll make a channel. How about I make a channel for it, specifically in the Discord? So we can share our um, study process. Let's make one text channel. We're gonna call this to sham to sham coloso homework. So there is a homework channel. To sham coloso homework. And there it is. Uh, I'm not sure if I will have to edit, but it's I, I've made it there. So we can um, put it in. I'll clean it up and check permissions and stuff. I'm not sure if everybody has permissions. Oh, and for my Discord, if you are new um, and you can't see the art channel, it's because you need to verify yourselves first. So go to the verification channel, type in your Twitch name or your Twitter name or whatever like username handle that you typically use. Um, type that in and then a mod will verify you um, so that you get access to the entire channel. So you're gonna need that to see everything in my Discord, so. It's just a thing to stop like uh, bots and stuff like that a little bit more. A little bit extra security, you know? Um, also, little bull car, thank you for the uh, follow and welcome to the Foxfires. Go on, go on. <laughs> Hi, you put foxes in the channel. So yeah, if you guys want to post any of your progress there, we have our own little channel for these study sessions now. So yeah, I think that brings study to a close. I try to keep it from six to nine. Um, so we're a little bit over time today, um, but we had a lot to squeeze in. So hopefully it'll be a little more under control next week. So mm. I think that's everything. <gasps> we did it! Wait, I got it. I got a thing for this. Wait, wait, wait. I can't see because my tablet's in the way. I need it. Yeah! You did it, Fox Face! Woohoo! <laughs> Big cheers! Thanks for the art learning. Of course, I hope it provided some useful information. Um, again, it was very basic, but I wanted this to be like anybody could jump in, no matter your skill level. So if you are more skilled and you know some of the Clip Studio shortcuts, hopefully maybe there was something you learned, like how to put your brush um, settings or setting shortcuts and stuff. I hope you learned at least one thing and hopefully it wasn't too repetitive. I'm somebody that like, I can watch beginner tutorials over and over again, because I feel like even in watching beginner tutorials, I learn one thing at least from it and then find it useful. So hopefully this was useful, useful for um, you, even if you are a more experienced artist as well. Uh, but yeah, that will be the end of stream. My throat is very tired from talking because there was a lot of talking tonight being a lesson stream. So we're gonna find somebody to raid. Also blaze with a also purse. With oh no, a. I don't want to hear me. Purse and a nya 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 nya. Nice ending purse. All right, who is online? Oh, Bellin is drawing. I want I want to stick with drawing. Oh, Julie is also on. Oh, Kan Kan is just chatting. What is this? Okay, well, let's go to Bell and Draw. I haven't rated them for a while. They are also a wonderful artist. So let's give them some love. They're doing some sketching at the moment. Um, I guess we'll just do like an art raid today. Art raid. Some hype sticks. Art raiding. Art raiding. Wait, let's, let's, uh, or should we do like the, may the art gods bless you. May the art gods bless you. <laughs> I like that. May the art gods bless you. <laughs> oh, or Lily art teacher stream, that works too. Use whatever you like that's art related. Um, and if you don't have my um, emotes, but you want to join in on the raid, you're more than welcome to join still. We have our Foxfire emotes. So you can steal those emotes and um, pop it in. Or if you got your own art ones, feel free to use those. I'm not picky, so. Um, yeah, we're gonna use that. And thank you all very, 
very much for joining me today. It was a very fun experience. I'm, I'm excited to go on this starting over my art journey with you guys. Um, it's never too late to learn how to draw art. And like I said, you don't need a, a tablet either. A lot of these um, tips and tricks and stuff like that apply to a pen and paper. Like I said, I'm gonna be practicing um, my head drawing and stuff like that just in a notebook when I'm too lazy to open up my uh, Clip Studio Paint um, because those skills will transfer over regardless if you're working on my tablet, a pen display, a pen or paper, it's always gonna be useful. So come join with us and uh, let's get this rape command out. So bell in, draw, there we are. Perfect, Raid is up. Thank you so much Foxfires for joining me. I hope you have a good rest of your Tuesdays and yeah, feel free to post today's work. If you, if you have work that you wanna show while you were drawn along with me, Feel free to post it in the homework uh, channel. That's just gonna be our channel that we work on things in. So feel free to post whatever you want there. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow in the Discord. Watch a Weeb Wednesdays, Pop Carry Diaries tomorrow. Or Thursday, we're gonna actually work on some um, cosplay on Thursday. So we got some uh, hand creative art on that day. But otherwise, if you are only interested in art, I'll see you next Tuesday for the continuation of our lesson plan. All right. <gasps> Bye bye, Fox Spies! Bye bye! <laughs> bye bye, bye bye, bye bye! The camp anime! Yes, I have seen the camp anime. It's coming. It's coming soon. It's already coming out, but we will be watching it later. Pop the carry diaries for now. But I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time zone it is for you, Fox Spies. I hope it's a good one. If you are off to bed, then sweet dreams. Otherwise, let's go get Bell and Draw some lovely. Foxfire loving. Bye bye.